All right. Good morning, good evening, afternoon, gamers. Welcome to the last run for uh, PSRM. Uh, I don't even actually remember the last time Rum or Battle Revolution has been in uh, PSR, but I want to say the last person that did it was Pokehero. Um, but what I'm going to do for this run, uh, typically I play with announcer off. Uh, it saves a little bit of time in a couple Coliseums, but the announcer is really sick. So we're going to keep the announcer on um, for this run, just, just, just for fun. It really doesn't lose too much time. It probably loses like maybe um, like a minute or two, but we can get into it in a, in a bit. I also have some save files in case anything goes awry. So um, we're gonna start on this file here. This file has st uh, st like runnable stats if we get some unlucky um, stat getting at the beginning. So time starts at the selection of, yes, when you <laughs> overwrite a file. So we're gonna go on go. So I hope you guys are cozy, ready. Um, it's gonna be a, a fun, Fun time. All right, three, two, one, go. All righty. So PBR, Pokemon Battle Revolution. Very fun game, came out in 2006. Um, a lot of people kind of see this as uh, that third Pokemon Stadium game that was made. Um, although it is pretty different from Pokemon Stadium, there is a lot less rental Pokemon that we have at our um, disposal. And also this game is a lot more uh, focused on like the DS um, transferring Pokemon, all that fun stuff. So less uh, single player options, but there are still quite a bit of single player content to play in the game. And that's what we're gonna be speed running. It's just gonna be completing round one of Coliseum mode as fast as possible, but we only can do it with one of the first battle passes that we selected. I selected Cindy, which is one of the worst, if not the worst battle pass in the game. Sorry, in the game. And there's six total. Um, but since we're doing low percent, we only have the two at the start at our options. Um, and the reason Cindy's pass is a lot worse is not just because of the t like um, stats, because Nate's, which is the other pa battle pass that we use, um, it's kind of bad. It's fine. That's actually good. It's fine. Uh, I'm actually gonna reset for this one. <laughs> we have two minus um, attacking stats, um, and that's okay. We'll just try again. It only takes about a minute and a half to try again. If I don't get the stat this attempt, we're just gonna start with the file that I have created already and we'll move from there. That's why we have the save files. Um, but, uh, so not only are the stats just a little bit better for Nate's pass, um, but the type coverage for Cindy <laughs> is basically non-existent. Um, a lot of Nate's Pokemon have uh, good type coverage moves or just they're a little bit better <laughs> as, a, as a team. But for Cindy's pass, um, it only uses Pokemon from Kanto, a generation one Pokemon. The starters, um, they give you a bird and they give you a dragon and something else. So for Nate, they give you Luxio and Gabite and Staravia and then the starters. And then for Cindy, um, we get Dragonair, Rhyhorn and Pidgeot. Also, skipping that, um, skipping the the don't listen text box and that don't listen text box saves about three minutes. So remember not to listen to the rules, kids. Um, but the fun part about this category is that mostly all of the strats and all the information that we've gotten for this category is relatively new. There's not much information in general about PBR on the internet. Um, so there's still a lot of unknown kind of information <laughs> to be found. But um, Cindy, for whatever reason, piqued my interest a couple years ago. And I decided to really attempt on completing low percent runs with them or with her. And that's kind of fine. OK, can, we can run this one. Oops. All right. 
Um, but I like the challenge of just doing it with pretty much the worst pass that you can get. Um, and also, it's a very legitimate low percent run. It's just like the slower variant. But I also gave myself the challenge of at the time beating the what was the low percent world record at the time with Cindy, and I did eventually do that. Um, I was able to get both the low percent times down to under four hours. There's been a lot of optimizations and strat findings. That's a range. We just missed the range. That's okay. My Pidgeot has a little less attack than I typically would like to go for. It's literally one point less. Um, but typically you want to have a, uh, one, around a 105 Pidgeot. We have a 104. But we do have a plus special attack uh, War Turtle, which is pretty cool. And everything else is uh, definitely doable. I think I actually have a plus, uh, plus attack Charmeleon as well. Um, the reason I look at the stats is, for me, when I was learning the game, um, getting those specific stats was kind of crucial to doing low percent. Um, this ranges like some of these that I may or may not be getting more often. Uh, Smeargle's another range. Let's see if we can get it. Hey, let's go. <laughs> Um, uh, 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 kind of forgot what I was talking about, but yeah, we have a lot more ranges that we have to worry about since we are a little lower on attack. But Pidgeot is going to be the main star of uh, Cindy's team. Uh, it has pretty good, like for the team's state uh, standards, it has pretty good attack. Um, it doesn't have the best coverage, but it's just a fast bird, so. You pretty much just brute force every fight as long as much as you can. Um, and one of uh, Pidgeot's also big fa um, like helping facets is that has, has aerial A's. I know it sounds like not much, but it's very important for this game to have something that has 100% uh, accurate move. Um, there's a lot of like accuracy lowering moves, especially when you do Cindy. Um, we'll get into those specific fight situations later on but um this run compared to nate is completely different <laughs> on nate's um when you're doing nate runs or just any percent you're able to use any of nate's team to really take take care of most of the teams on uh any given uh coliseum that you go to but for Cindy, if you have a fire type, that's the type that you have. My Charmeleon has one real attacking move and then like some chip moves that if I have no coverage or if I'm in a double battle, it does good chip damage. Like I have no other extra like attacking moves. So that's also why Pidgeot's really helpful because it has two attacking moves instead of just one. <laughs> So for whatever reason, they just made Cindy's pass a lot worse. I'm not really sure why. Um, but when for the Pokemon, like the pool of Pokemon that we're having to f play against um, in round one, and the strategy that you can use with Cindy's Pokemon, there are a couple instances where um, it's a little slower to use Cindy's pass, but it's somewhat a little more consistent. Um, I will say that it's only for like maybe like two Colosseums where it's like that, but um, it's still neat that that's the case. <laughs> Cindy's pass is really bad. Uh, the other thing that I want to be taking note of is the gender of all my Pokemon. Um, Attract is pretty prevalent in this game. Um, so, and also uh, Cute Charm, which if you don't know what that is, if you touch a Pokemon that has Cute Charm and you're the opposite gender, you may or may not become infatuated with it. We got a little unlucky here, so um, now similar to the Stadium S style um, speedrun, we have our team of six. And versus the other team of six, and then we have to pick our probable team of three. If it's a double battle, it's a team of four. Um, but our team of three uh, to predict the best outcome for the fight. Um, typically, obviously, you don't want to switch out too much. For Cindy's pass, it's a little different. There's sometimes fights where you need to switch out. Sometimes there's fights where um, 
like I kind of just need to get good luck in the sense of if they bring certain Pokemon, I kind of can't win. There's some instances where I can clutch out a win. The AI isn't necessarily always the smartest, but it is definitely like, you know, up in the air. <laughs> it's hard to predict whether the AI is going to play smart, but you typically try to play as if the AI is going to play dumb. Because generally they don't do the best things. They usually like to troll kind of like this. They like using substitute a lot. Uh, we'll see fake out quite often. Protect. They love a good double protect. The end of the battle is getting closer by the minute. Uh, and I'm, I'm pretty sure like the announcer doesn't really affect too much of um, certain call teams like Main Street. Um, but Coliseum's like Waterfall, which is going to be the next Coliseum we go to, Magma Coliseum. Um, I think there's another one. I want to say it's probably Neon. Um, there's, but it might just be two Coliseums where it just loses time when you're doing some of the fights because uh, if you give in in any of the fights, which we will be doing, uh, the announcer needs to finish his uh, dialogue before he can start the next dialogue of giving in. Um, so it just like wastes a couple seconds. Per, per fight that you do that with. But I do hope you guys enjoy the announcer because this, this announcer is very good. Trainers. Neither side can afford to give up in this battle. The stage is set and the curtain is up. Uh, Butterfree is one of these, is a, is a sleeper spooky Pokemon. So it's, I, I don't, I'm, I'm, I'm not as uh, familiar with like range, uh, uh, percentages and stuff like that, like 15 out of 16, 31 out of 32, I don't know, but you get the gist <laughs> if I say it. So Butterfree is definitely like a 15 out of 16 range. Sometimes you just don't get the range, and it doesn't make any sense because it's a Butterfree, but... <laughs> Oh, that was actually good energy. Uh, and typically, um, it's actually pretty recently I personally started using the sensor bar uh, during runs. I would use I used to do runs uh, holding it sideways, um, just because it was a little more comf comfy and it, I kind of enjoyed I guess the gameplay aspect a little bit more. But I nowadays um, it's it's kind of proven that it's faster to use the sensor bar like the entire time. It's also a little easier when you're doing double battles. Um, and I was having like a lot of controller malfunctions where there was like double inputs and it was kind of annoying. So I did switch over to do uh, sensor bar the entire time. And it's fun. It's, it's very like nostalgic to play with the sen Wii sensor bar. <laughs> And so for this Coliseum, it's it's a very simple basic Coliseum. There's actually not too many um, where we're, there are single battles. So that's pr pretty much like the only unique part of this Coliseum is that it's single battle and not double battle. Um, but we're going to see some pretty interesting <laughs> formats throughout the run. And um, Cindy's type coverage is going to come into play for sure. <laughs> The next Coliseum, I I considered creating like a save file for uh, like after beating it, just to, like just because I was like scared of it. But we're not gonna be scared of it. It's gonna be okay. <laughs> all right, these are not bad at all. These fights can go pretty bad. Um, mostly. Every trainer has one Pokemon that is just annoying for them to bring. Sometimes there's there's trainers that are just not great. They have Pokemon that we can just all kill. Um, but generally, this is the one. This is the, this is the Pokemon that's like a little longer. Like, El Elena has like a bunch of pretty weak Pokemon, but then she has Staravia, who can lower my attack, um, and Lickitung, who's just bulky. I do have facade, so if it paralyzes me, kind of not a bad idea. <laughs> but now I don't want him to 
paralyze me because then it would kill me. Most likely. But we did some decent damage rolls on that, on those facades, so it should be fine. It, it's typically a three hit, but if you get like really bad damage rolls or something, you can not get the three hit. Sick. Um, the other aspect that I haven't touched yet is um, there are held items for this game. Um, Stadium 2 has held items, but very uh, simple held items, only a, like a list of like six or eight, something like that. Um, this game, it's whatever the game decided to give the rental Pokemon, but all rental Pokemon have a held item. Um, and they also will like always have the same ability. Uh, so I don't need to worry about that kind of stuff. I, I, all I have to worry about is just their stats. Um, the nature will will change, but that's part of the stats. So No, we cannot turn off animations. That would be quite the time save if you could turn off animations. This is an important and if you have any questions, feel free to ask. I'll do my best to, to answer um, as the best as I can. Begins. This game has a has is definitely like a, a pretty important game to me. It was just a really nostalgic game. Um, I played it a lot when I was a kid, and then in like 20 like 15, 2014. Oh, bad luck. Oh. Uh, 2014, 2015 time. I, me and Poke Hero were just like talking about how much we liked Pokemon Battle Revolution and how we think it'd be a fun speed run, and. Um, and then he started doing runs of it, and I would just kind of like help out, watch do runs. And then I eventually picked it up, and it's just such a, it's such a fun game. I love it so much. And I've also put a lot of time and effort into it, so there's been a lot of cool information that's been found, like due to the amount of uh, research that's been found since like the pandemic um, and all that. Um, I'm getting pretty unlucky but usually if i get if i get put to sleep my pokemon are zonked they're they're out until turn five maybe four wake up okay let's go let's go turn four <laughs> gloom is a, a range if you have like better attack that probably wasn't gonna be a, a one shot with my attack stat So Pidgeot's uh, held item is um, the Muscle Band, which is also why <laughs> Pidgeot's just a little bit better too. Um, as you can probably expect with the rest of like the starters for Cindy's team, they just have their like kind of typical. Um, uh, uh, what's it called? Their type, attacking type uh, boost. So like the Miracle Seed, Charcoal, Mystic Water. Um, what does Dragoner have? Dragoner has a Citrus Berry. And Rhyhorn has a uh, Soft Sand. Um, but nothing like crazy. It does help with like type coverages or whatever if, if, this, if you're using that type. But... Um, the stats still don't help too, too much. <laughs> but our stats aren't too bad, so that's good. They're all... None, I didn't have to just like accept one of them being below average. All of them are at least average. Got a little unlucky with the order there, but Ivysaur, as you saw, the moveset there has quite the moveset. <laughs> Miracle Seed... Uh, not, not Miracle Seed, what the heck. Um, Magical Leaf, sorry. Magical Leaf, Toxic, Leaf Seed, and Cut. Very good, very competitive, very helpful. <laughs> so, Ivysaur is really only useful for one thing, and it's using Magical Leaf. <laughs> it's not even, like, bulky, really, so it's kind of bulky. Kind of, compared to like other stuff on our team, I guess, but <laughs> not really.
But we're getting through it. Now we're on to Todd. Who has an overwhelmingly large amount of Pokemon that are weak to fire. Pretty much just don't want two, two of his Pokemon to show up. Um, I don't know if this was, like, intended in the game either, but there's going to be certain instances. It's not too common, I don't think, um, but there are certain instances where there's certain fights in the game that seem to be, like, designed for a specific Pokemon or a specific team that's, like, already in the game, kind of. And what I mean by that is uh, there's going to be this... Like this fight specifically, like if you have a fire type, I don't know what 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 Todd ex like assumes is going to happen. Um, but this next fight that we're going to be doing uh, seems to be kind of like written for two specific Pokemon of the beginner passes. Um, for Nate, it seems to be written ex like just for Grottle. Like you just ha like if you don't lead Grottle in um, the in the Taylor fight, in the Coliseum leader for this Coliseum, uh, it just isn't the optimal thing to do. And there's this, it's the same strat for this uh, pass, just not for, not Brottle and not Ivysaur. Spoiler alert. But it is a Pokemon that we haven't used yet. That was one of the Pokemon Tremulean can't kill, but it's not bad for Laron to be brought because I can just one-shot it. The end of the battle is getting closer by the minute. And I'm, pr I got, I'm pretty sure I have plus special attack War Turtle. I think I had a 100 um, special blow. attack there. The results are in. It's a total victory for the blue corner. All right, so that was semifinal. Heading to the to the last one. So um, our backups are going to be for specific Pokemon. So the other two Pokemon that we're going to pick are just for literally like two other Pokemon that uh, Rhyhorn can't kill because we're using Rhyhorn. Shout out to Rhyhorn. So um, it just for whatever reason seems like this fight was designed for Rhyhorn to lead it. Um, she has uh, the challenger, who's already two, come yeah, two electric types, Jigglypuff uh, and Bonsai also die um, to dig in one shot. Both and um, so we're sure and then Curlia and Love Disc, he just swap out. Begins. But um, the other thing about ha just ha any team that has electric types when you have Cindy, um, Rhyhorn has... Um, uh, what's it called? I just forgot what it's called. What's his ability? <laughs> My brain just stopped working. Lightning Rod. It has a Lightning Rod. So any electric type move is just not going to work. Um, and sometimes the AI will just use an electric type move. Sometimes they're smart about it, but not all the time. So partially we hope for them to just not um, hit. But also typically they can't hit. So we just use Dig. The red corner attacks, but the target Pokemon I'm pretty sure um, this is just a one shot. I don't even I don't think it's a range. My attack for uh, Rhyhorn's not too bad. 110 is a little above average. Is sent out. Okay, so we swap here because Curlia has a uh, magical leaf. It can use Calm Mind, but. Um, the blue corner calls their We're just gonna swap. Cause I don't even think Dig will kill. It might, but I don't really know. Starts to attack. Yeah, there's the magical leaf. Hit. The battle has reached its final stage. And we're just gonna bite. Charmeleon's very small type coverage coming in the, into play. We generally won't even really use bite. Um, the the up. Upside to using Bite as opposed to Fire Fang is that it is 100% accurate and Fire Fang is not, and that's about it. So, only a few instances where we will actually be doing that, but that is one of them. <laughs> that wasn't too bad. 
21 minutes. It's about average uh, Main Street for sure. And now we're on to definitely one of the harder um, Coliseums for solo Cindy. If you're using Nate, it's definitely like, it, this Coliseum can just give you bad luck and you can just get screwed over. Um, but Nate has type coverage and can deal with stuff generally. Cindy doesn't have type coverage. So if you just get bad luck, you pretty much just have to give in and try again. <laughs> so we're going to see how it goes. There's a, a lot of relatively consistent ways to do these. I've done a lot of practice, a lot of notes. So uh, we're going to do our best. So the way that this Coliseum works is that instead of it being like your team of three, we're actually picking five Pokemon and it's a bunch of 1v1s. So we have to win three 1v1s in order to beat the trainer. Um, there's no switching out. You can't, like, it, it is what it is. So I have to beat this Lombre. Okay. Not the best, but not the worst. Hopefully just use Fake Out. Okay, that's fine too, actually. Letting it do some damage to itself isn't the worst thing. Um, but I pretty much just hope I don't miss Ice Fang and it's about a three hit. I think it's still gonna be a three hit with the substitute damage, but um, I think it's only grass type move is absorbed, but it might not have that. It might just have substitute, fake out, water sport, and fury swipes. I'm, I'm pretty sure that's its move set. So even though this is kind of slow, I will take this. Um, getting Rhyhorn a win is pretty important, and that's why we start with Rhyhorn. Um, it might seem kind of like counterintuitive a little bit to start with the wor worst Pokemon, but it gives us more opportunity to get a Pokemon that Rhyhorn actually can kill, because um, there are a couple Pokemon that Rhyhorn can't kill. Um, for this team, there's only one uh, that he can't really can't like actually kill and it's uh some flora and if you get lucky enough you can kill some flora but um it's if, if it just uses the grass type move you're dead so we will take a lombre it's not fast but it is a is, it is a win and that's really the most important part and this is where you can kind of see the time loss i mean you, you can't really see it but the the talking goes into the the uh, zooming out of the game or of the, each match. So if you just have that off, the game will load a little faster, like end those matches quicker. Um, someone did mention this, and I didn't even really like think about it, but it's true. Um, some people play with the announcer on because it's a good indicator of if you've gotten the kill. Because sometimes the the sliver of health that's left is like really, really small. And you're like, what the heck? The blue corner <laughs> has two wins How did I not get that? One more win and victory will be claimed. Okay. Not the best, but we can kill Flaffy. Ooh, good crit. Let's go. I do have a good and bad crit counter on my splits. Um, we are one and one right now. I I consider bad crits to be just like if the Pokemon didn't need the crit to kill it, that's a bad crit. Um, or if a crit kills me or does a lot of damage to me, that makes it like kind of bad to lose. Like make it English is hard. Sorry makes it more likely to lose time or lose the fight or something, that's a bad crit. I don't count all crits, but I count most of them. <laughs> Same layout here. Um, we have a little more to worry about, but not too, too much more to worry about for, for this fight. Um, I'm pretty sure Beautifly and um, Warmadam can kind of mess up Rhyhorn. But other than that, I think we should be okay. Yeah, that's, that's a good one. Is this, well, I wouldn't say it's a good one. It's kind of slow, but if we get a little lucky, then it's not too bad. We just want to get our attacks in before it uses Harden. That's why you don't use Dig. Also, it's not very effective. 
But yeah, this is like, Rhyhorn's Ice Fang is probably the furthest will go for type coverage on a Pokemon. Um, and if you think the Dragonair is good, think again, because it's not. <laughs> the Dragonair is probably the worst Pokemon on the team. Um, its stats are just not good. They're not very viable or really next. They're barely next to usable. Um, and Dragonair is pretty much just used as um, like a punching bag, kind of whittling away a Pokemon. It's the bulkiest thing on the team, so that's the only thing Dragonair has going for it. But other than that, we don't really want to use it. Um, getting a one shot with Dragonair is like. I don't, I don't even know if I've ever done that. <laughs> so. We'll see Dragonair be a little bit more useful later on in the run, but for the most part, not not too much. This is who you want to get against um, Rhyhorn, because you can just kill it with Dig. But everyone, all the other Pokemon can... Charmeleon and Pidgeot can kill the Pokemon pretty easily, so... The only thing we have to worry about is getting Wormadam. Um, Wormadam can kill Charmeleon if he just uses Dig and I don't kill it. Um, I think with my attack set I would have killed it, but um, Dig will just kill Charmeleon. And then Wormadam can use um, Rock Blast on Pidgeot. And it only will kill if it crits and hits five times. That's the only time it'll kill. <laughs> or if I have like bad defense or something. Let's go, I got the 15 out of 16, let's go. <laughs> Alright, uh, I'd say Harry's probably the most consistent out of everybody in this Coliseum, so that went well, that's good. These next two fights are definitely one of the harder, I mean actually the rest of the Coliseum is kind of hard, but these next two fights are really inconsistent because a main Pokemon that we have to kind of use uh, is Ivysaur in one of them. In this one, we just have to kind of get good luck, really. We want Rhyhorn to have to go against Nidorino. Just not a water type, though. If we can get a not water type, that'll be fantastic. Or just stay, stay killing these bugs. Um, I don't know the um the total intricacies of this, but I do know that in certain coliseums, um, the Pokemon do vary per run. Um. Like the AI Pokemon, their stats do vary sometimes. Um, I don't, I, I don't, I don't really know the intricacies of it. Um, shout out to Random Rise. He's done a lot of work with just like stat or like information finding and like trying to get anything he can out of the game, um, and like help with learning stuff. He's done uh, round two, which is an incredible feat. Um, super duper hard to do like anything past round one with the rental Pokemon so yeah that's a really cool run um, but there is just cer certain instances where sometimes the Pokemon have different stats than the run before or whatever um, it's not like run defining um, but it is noticeable sometimes if you like don't get a range or something like that this isn't a this isn't a great matchup but it's okay we want Lombre to not really do that but we just don't want Lombre to use Water Sport because it has Water Sport. Otherwise, it's okay. Double fake out. I respect it. <laughs> hey, let's go, crit. Let's go. That's a good crit. Okay, the, the, the scary ones, the two Pokemon that are weak to water are done, so that's good. We probably are going to be fighting against the water type here, though. Oh, okay. Alright. We take that. We take that every day of the week. 
The move okay. fails. The the single player helping hand. He's giving me a good old clap before I hit him. Good, no poison. Just don't poison me again. The red corner still can't pull up a move. Crushing blow. Dang. I always get turn two poison point. <laughs> It's a total victory for the blue corner. There's another method of like trying to figure out what the best team combination is when you're doing runs. Uh, it seems like um, per copy, like per like people that when, when you're doing attempts, there sometimes seems to be somewhat of a trend at least when um, you're fighting each trainer. Like, hold on a second. So like for 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 just like a, as an example, um, I could just do runs a bunch of times over and over again, and for whatever reason, Sierra will just always lead a palm. So some plan like you can kind of route around that. It's obviously not always going to work in your favor because right here this Both just didn't work. So I have to give in. I can't beat Mappa. No this, be this is. And this is also uh, the that round. there's like a pure example right there of losing a little bit of time because the animate or the announcer because like if you just give in without the announcer it just goes right to the to the next screen. But homeboy got to stop talking. <laughs> ah, that's not good either. I can win this, but it's it's gonna be close. At this point, I can just kind of give in and try again, but I can win the Celio matchup. If he doesn't use Aurora Beam, turn one. Okay. The battle is getting intense. I need a crit to kill this turn at least. Nicely done. The red corner faces mm. a great deal of pressure. Uh, I should kill next turn. Oh, okay, Encore. Yeah, Celio, so Celio is weird. Um, he's bulky and annoying, but the AI doesn't really use it the best a lot of the time for some reason. I don't know why, because whenever there's a Poliwhirl on screen, they just, they go crazy. But they don't know what to do with Celio. <laughs> um, so that was, that was good at least. One win and one loss. It's all even now. Time to focus. The but that's that is fully outcome. the downfall of Ivysaur in this Coliseum, and that's that's a big part of why this Coliseum is hard because it's just even if it's just one loss, it's such a big loss, and they can just okay, I got I got the fine there. They can just just out luck me and pick a water type here, and then I lose again, and it's just rough to deal with. So. I'm pretty much just hoping that Dragonair can kill the next Pokemon. It should be fine. Um, the pretty much worst thing I could have gotten is out of the way, Celio. Um, I don't want Poliwhirl, but we're just going to hope we don't have to fight Poliwhirl. Uh, I'm going to Dragon Rage. I think Dragon Rage kills at this health. Dragon Rage is a lot faster animation, so if I can go for it, I will try to. And it's accurate, so... Blue Corner now has two wins and one loss. One more win and victory will be claimed. <laughs> He's not lying. Okay, I can move. Fourth set of Pokemon Just have don't appeared. use Aurora Beam. Pretty sure it has Aurora Beam, but it doesn't really use it too often. A fierce blow. It's a direct hit. Defog. <laughs> it's invasiveness Turn one defog, I respect it. Alright, GG. That's a hard fight, so I'm glad we got Sierra done first try. It's down and out. Game set and match. It's an absolute victory for the blue corner. An absolute victory. Hey. Thank you.
Ruben. So these uh, last fights can go pretty well if you get just relatively okay luck. Um, um, but they can go a little, a little awry. But Ruben's not too, too bad. You can just get a little unlucky. But the next fight's gonna have uh, we have we have to we have to deal with more Ivysaur and River, so hopefully that goes okay. Are full of energy, so we're sure to see a great battle. The stage is set and the curtain is up. A fierce blow. It's a direct hit. Ding. I can aerial ace the next turn. Fails. Aerial Ace is a much faster animation, so that's another instance of if I can go for that, I will try to. I just get scared. <laughs> I want to make sure I kill the Pokemon a lot of the time. So I'll eat the couple seconds you lose for doing facade. The blue corner won the first round. That's a smooth start. Thank you. The okay. second set of Pokemon have appeared. A fierce blow. The red corner barely holds oh, on. I did a lot of damage. <laughs> oh, I think it's my stat. I forgot I have a good War Turtle. War Turtle is actually, like, <clears throat> in my opinion. Oh. A fierce this is going to come. It's a direct hit. Uh, War Turtle is, like, one of the better Pokemon for this team. I'd say at the start of doing runs and everything, I thought it was like uh, Rhyhorn and Pidgeot. Um, Pidgeot's always been like the best one, but I thought it was like Rhyhorn, Pidgeot, Charmeleon, but I think it's probably Pidgeot, Charmeleon, War Turtle, Rhyhorn, just because Rhyhorn's not that good. If, it, if Rhyhorn was faster or like something, it'd be a little better, but it being so weak to a lot of things that are in the game commonly is rough. Third set of okay, Pokemon have appeared. Hit. The substitute appeared. What? <laughs> what a troll. We're gonna horn attack, I think. It hit the substitute. <laughs> right. That's a bad crit. <laughs> it's attack missed. We're just gonna take the time loss and just do a two turn. Oh, I, another two turn. <laughs> Chimchar starts to attack. Chimchar. Hits. It keeps dealing damage. I also like to think that there is a way to speed up these animation stuff, but there isn't. <laughs> Bam. Do I mash A a lot? Yes. It take hey, good luck to Comet it's doing the down. Nuzlocke. That's pretty cool. The good feet. Alright. On to River. This is a spooky one. Even in my notes, like, the first three that you pick is kind of interchangeable because of just how the RNG works. So, let's just see how it goes. We're going to lead Ivysaur. are full of energy, mm, so we're horrible. sure to see a great battle. The battle begins! I don't know if this one's winnable. I think it is. Okay, we'll win it. I kind of need to. It didn't use Fake Out, too, which is good. Ivysaur starts to attack. It's a close call, River, but I'll take a Lombre. A rigid shot.
The move fails. Got a male Ivysaur. Sometimes I, I forget to peek at the genders Rushing until low. it's too late. It went down. Captivate's another big one that they do in this game too, though. The so blue corner won the good to know. Round. That's a smooth start. I also usually write down what my stats were, but I kind of didn't do that. Because <laughs> we were in a hurry. <laughs> Trying to quicken up the pace here. The okay, that's good. Set of Pokemon have appeared. Bam! A brilliant attack. So I hope you guys have been enjoying PSR. This has been... Um, it's been really cool. This weekend's been really busy for me. I got to play a lot of Pokemon. I did a rumble earlier in the marathon, and then there was a, a rumble tournament to happen this weekend, and then I got to play this for you guys, which again, I'm very grateful and very happy that I get to do this. This category and like, this game, yeah, as well, but this category specifically is just like a baby to me. I've put so much time and effort, and uh, I love it so much. And I'm glad I get to like show it to other people because no, like d just again, the knowledge, uh, general knowledge and information that we have for this game is not a lot. So it really was like, <laughs> it's, uh, it's interesting that we're able to do it um, as fast as we can do it now, nowadays. That was a really good two hit. It's arranged to get the two hits. It's a total victory for the blue corner. And like two good damage rolls as well. That was a good river. All right, on to Marina. This is probably the scariest fight in the Coliseum. But see how it goes. We got a lot of perfect points. Um. And if you don't know what perfect points are, if you just finish a, f a battle and don't have any deaths on your team, you'll get one perfect point. Um, so when, if you to, if you were to lose a, f a battle or something, it, you're able to use a, a perfect point. Um, perfect, perfect, absolutely perfect right there. That's the one thousand percent what you want. Bam! A brilliant attack right from the start. Very nice. Um. Wow, I got distracted by <laughs> getting Corsola first. All right, we still have to get Rhyhorn to win. Still, not out of the woods yet. It's actually really not over f for a while. <laughs> like, Wormadam is scary. Um, Poliwhirl, Meryl. Okay. We're gonna dig. That's fair. We don't go for Protect, because that's just like a whole other um, animation. And if they don't go for Fake Out, then you get turn one dig. And that's cool. <laughs> a clean hit. That dealt some crit. Massive damage. I don't count those crits, because it probably attacks, doesn't matter. <laughs> but the target Pokemon is underground. A fierce blow. The red corner barely holds on. Alright. It hits. Slammed him. One more marina fight. It couldn't take it. It's Come on, Pidgeot. The blue corner has two wins so far. We got like the one slowest one. Win. For Pidgeot to get done already, so that's good. We just kind of don't want someone that'll that control us a little bit, ideally. <laughs> mm, it's a little spooky, but we we should be okay. If I get a crit, everything's fine. Uh, I think otherwise we just need to not get crit and hit five times. Such amazing power. Don't do it. Multiple hits. It keeps dealing damage. Okay, we're fine.
It's funny that Wormadam is a spooky one, but hey. Aerial Ace hits. It's not my fault. <laughs> it's down and out. The game is now. Alrighty. Over. That was a, a totally that was a really good uh, waterfall. <laughs> No deaths, or no uh, losses. We had like one death. It's actually really good. Especially for Cindy. Alrighty. So on to one of the harder, another one of the harder ones. Um, but this one's hard because there's actually a little bit of, of uh, extra skill involved. So for Neon Coliseum, um, you have to get your team of four, because we're doing double battles now. You have to get your team of four by selecting them in a roulette wheel that you have to time your A button press to get the Pokemon that you want. So I'm going to focus whenever I'm getting the teams, and hopefully I don't mess it up. But there's a lot of RNG that goes into this, a lot of adapting to what they select as well. So we'll see how this goes. Typically, I always want to start with getting Pidgeot. Okay. I'll get Charmeleon. Yeah, I'm gonna get Bastiodon now. Bastiodon's really bulky. I don't like them having it. Um, they got War Turtle. I'm gonna get Dragonair. Okay. I could have also gotten Ivysaur. But I have enough Pokemon to work to deal with grass types, so I don't mind them getting a grass type. I'd rather get the dragon type. Um, so typically you want to get your team of two um, right away. So like the two you want to have start off the fight and pretty much do the fight with. And then you want to get two Pokemon that you don't want to have to fight against. That's kind of the, the dynamic for um, for the wheel and like how, how you should select the teams. Um, and it, it, they can just get one of your, they can get Pidgeot. Um, if you don't get Pidgeot first, they could get Dragonair first try because you, you don't go for Dragonair. Um, there's, a, there's a lot of things that can happen. So there's not a direct set team to go for for each battle. Um, but there is like a somewhat ideal team to go for because of the Pokemon that the other team brings. Because it's always going to be the same other six Pokemon that's being brought. It's just how the AI is going to do the wheel is random every time. And I'll get to your question in, about EVs in a second comment because it's actually very interesting. Um, I do need to pull up a little document actually to kind of answer your question um, as correct as I can. But there is some information on EVs and IVs in the game. It's very interesting. Let me get that for you. Good thing about um, the stadium-esque runs is you're able to do a little bit of other stuff on the, in the meantime. <laughs> that hurt. A fierce blow. Charmeleon barely holds on. Ivysaur is sent out. Well, both corners right. still have a chance uh, to win this. What kind of developments can we expect to see next? <sighs> Dude, got unlucky there. Ouch. That was rather self-destructive. <laughs> you know what? You're not wrong. It was rather self-destructive. Fierce blow. It's a direct hit. A little unfortunate there, but it is what it is. <laughs> Ooh. Pidgeot became badly poisoned. A beautiful attack. <laughs> Interesting choice. Pidgeot suffers from poison. Dragonair. Dragonair is sent out. Pidgeot seems to be in pain. This could get dangerous if it lasts too long. Dragoner can't kill War Turtle, so <laughs> I have to do this to kill it. But thanks for the so or thanks for the toxic. That helped a little bit. I'm doing my best to find these notes for you. There's a lot of uh, Google Docs that I got over here. <laughs> 
Ivysaur became paralyzed. A light hit. The damage caused by poison is slowly increasing. The red oh, corner stands with their backs against the wall. Ivysaur will be lucky to get through this crisis. So this information um, was given to me um, by a previous um, PBR runner. You guys might recognize their name is TJ Blakely. Um, there's an old Pokemon Speed Runner. They used to do PBR, um, a lot of PBR stuff actually back in the day. And he did a lot of research um, for like rental Pokemon stuff. Let me get this wheel going. No, no worries about the no worries comment. It's a very good question. There's it's it's a very interesting like dynamic about the game, um, and it's not really known. It, it's not really known, <laughs> it, and it's not really understood why it's a thing or either. Like it just is a thing. I mean, just a second. So I gotta kind of like read through it. So um, there is a term called invested stats. Um, that helps with um, explaining the rental Pokemon stats. Um, so those invested stats are basically um, every single time you play the game for those rental Pokemon, um, there is a stat that there's EVs in. There's a bunch of EVs in. And um, it's always going to be those same two stats every time you play the game. Um, it's just those numbers are going to vary smallly, minutely. Um, so for Cindy's pass, um, Pidgeot, Pidgeot's invested stats are attack and speed. So there's always going to be um, 128 EVs in attack and 128 EVs in speed. Um, and then... It's like that for all the rental Pokemon. So, um, Rhyhorn has attack and special defense. Charmeleon has attack and speed, so on and so forth. Um, there's a there's like one instance of it being a little different, it's, but it's on one of the other late game rental passes, so it's not really important. Hopefully, he doesn't kill Rhyhorn or uh, War Turtle, but it's okay if he does. I have Ivysaur as well. Um, and feels the relief. But there's also um, the IVs in this game um, range between and 6 and 12. Um, and um, 0 and 6 on the stats that are not um, invested, if that makes sense. So... For Pidgeot example, um, Pidgeot's attack IVs are going to range between um, 6 to 12 every time you do a run, every time you reset the game. But um, it's like defense IVs are going to range from 0 to 6. So if that doesn't make sense, I can explain it. I can try explaining it a little better, um, but I hope that that explains that. So yeah, there's always two stats that have EVs, and it's always the same stats. And then the IVs is distributed, not completely randomly, but somewhat randomly. Between 0 and 6, and then 6 and 12 for the two um, invested stats.
Shout out to TJ Blakely again for that. That's very, very cool information. All right. On to Jessica. Tough here. But I don't want them to get Wiggly Tough. They got Dragonair and Ivysaur. That's kind of bad, but uh, Dragonair isn't the worst just because Dragonair doesn't have good moves to use against me. <laughs> it's just kind of bulky. But um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to try and get um, Status Affliction on my Pidgeot. Illuminated by the beautiful neon light, an exciting battle is about to begin. Swap you out. The blue corner suddenly calls their Pokemon back. Not mad that I got War Turtle though, Charmeleon it's a good thing, because they brought um Rhyhorn. And now the Rhyhorn's annoying begins. annoying to kill if you don't have a special attack. A smashing blow. I don't I don't think it works for all the other Pokemon comment, and if it does, there's not enough like I don't have the research to know what the invested stats are for like all the other Pokemon, but I do have like all the invested stats for each of the rental Pokemon because that's how it's. I'm pretty sure it's just for the rental pass Pokemon. I don't know if it's for the um, uh, what's it called? I'm not sure if it's for um, like the trade Pokemon in Gateway and stuff like that. I'm not sure about that. Which is unlocked after you beat round one, bad crit. <laughs> it went down. Oh wait, I'm done. Mm. Rhyhorn is sent out. The air in the Coliseum is tense and charged. I kind of played this a little wrong, but that's okay. I'm just going to reset this, bring out War Turtle, kill Rhyhorn, and probably just bring back Pidgeot. I've been doing the wheel a pre pretty okay, so that's good. But um, they're, they're doing okay with the wheel as well, and they're also playing a little slow-like. <laughs> We're just gonna do this chip damage to the Dragonair. Dragonair already got its Citrus Berry out of the way. He's crit. Okay, it didn't flinch, so that's good. Alright, Rhyhorn's gone. I don't really remember what the last one was. Oh, I can leave that alive. Can they end this quickly? Nicely done. Dragonair. In this instance, I kind of want them to kill my Charmeleon so I can just go into my... Okay. Is that gonna go? Okay. Oh. He didn't even use Twister. <laughs> well, I don't really care who it goes now. slow but not not bad this is okay Oops. sorry <laughs> is sent out at least but if I crit I kill <laughs> a fierce blow. dang it's a direct <laughs> hit Oh, it was in 
accentuated by the opponent's attraction. Rushing blow. It did try. It couldn't survive it did try. the second hit and goes down. The battle has ended. The blue corner pulled off an impressive victory. All right, on to Barrett. I was like, don't get wiggly tough, dude. <laughs> I could have used Dragonair to get rid of the Corsola, but eh, it's kind of slow to do that. I'd like to have Vibisaur if I can. And they got Poliwhirl anyway, so it worked out. All right. From the blue corner, Pidgeot, War Turtle. Get rid and of, from uh, the red corner, Rhyhorn here. Rhyhorn, Charmeleon. Such energy. And now the battle begins. Hopefully. <laughs> the red corner makes the first attack. A solid hit. A fierce blow. It's a direct hit. Let's go. I didn't get flinched. All right, now I'm going to swap Ivysaur out. It's down already. Swap him to this field. <laughs> Corsola is sent out. The red corner has already taken some serious damage. However, this battle is just getting started. All right, this wasn't bad at all, actually. Ivysaur is sent out. So there's a couple different ways to go about like figuring out how the wheel works. The way that I I do is I always keep my my cursor in the same spot, um, and then I once the wheel is about like a third of the way like to you I guess that's a, if that's like one way to put it. Um, that's when I press the button. Kind of like when it's at this this top of the screen up here is when I press the button here like some, sometime around here. Leads. If I get a crit on the poly, I feel okay. So that's a thing that happens with the cursor. <laughs> it's kind of funny, but <laughs> the cursor is just somewhere else, and the game's like, oh nope. I was just mashing A too fast. No, dude, not the confuse. Come on, Ivysaur. A fierce blow. It's a direct hit. Polyworld restored its health and feels the relief. Come on, I'm sorry. Oh no! It attacked itself! <laughs> well, both corners still have a chance to win this. Need to get that range again on Polyworld. I got a good damage on that first roll. It might not matter, but I might need it. This isn't gonna matter. Didn't even hit with Ivysaur. <laughs> its special attack fell. A fierce blow. Polyworld barely holds on. No, dude. It attacked its no, head. dude. That has got to hurt. Ivysaur. It hit two Pokemon at once. It's losing time, but it's not losing as much time until Polyworld's dead, I guess. <laughs> Aerial Ace hits. It couldn't take it. It's See, now down. it's starting to lose more time. <laughs> it snapped out of its confusion. Oh, let's go. Good job, I used to. Just in time. A huge amount of damage. It's down. Alrighty. 
The results are in. It's a total victory for the blue corner. I think this next fight is probably one of the more difficult ones of the Coliseum, but they can all go bad, so it's hard to say. But generally, Goldie's kind of smart. Dragon or the course is not great, but that's fine. I can use Dragoner for that. Both corners are so full of energy that there's no doubt this will be a great uh, actually, battle. Yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go for that. Hopefully, get one of these ranges. <laughs> They're both ranges, so. Bam! A brilliant attack right from the start. Let's go. <laughs> Almost didn't go for that. Chimchar is always a good pick for them to get. It's just weak. <laughs> it's a little fast, but other than that, it's an easy kill. I was expecting Corsola, but there is always a that makes this a little back. faster. Thank you, game. Aerial Ace hits. Boldy uh, helping out. These fights haven't been anything too crazy. I think I had one. I was okay. Hang up. Joey was okay. All right. Um, but they've been a little below average, these fights, but they've been okay. Nothing bad's really happened, so that's good. Well, hopefully that keep that up. Yeah, also, this the music for this game is just fantastic. Um, we do, unfortunately, skip gateway, so part of the requirement of low percent um obviously we beat the game with one battle pass um that's the main requirement but the other requirement is you can't go to gateway like obviously it's it's you don't need to beat gateway uh, in order to actually beat this game um so ga ga gateway is just used to get other pokemon um and in any percent you go there Solely because I'll I'll say that was a good crit. We needed it to kill. Um. Uh. Sorry, I just lost my train of thought. Um. But gateway, you get Pokemon. Um. That's how you obtain the rental Pokemon that you want that you can unlock later. You just, like go through gateway with them. Um. But for low percent, you just don't go to gateway. You just use the one pass that you started the game with. Um, it's down. So we only do uh, I think nine out of the ten coliseums. Game set and match. It's a total Unless I'm bad at counting, which I am bad at counting. So. <laughs> Last two. I was I was a little late. It's rough. Okay. Okay. Uh. I might just give in this one. Hmm. 
kind of messed up that wheel. They didn't get a great team other than Dragonair, but I don't even think I got my Charmeleon. If I got my Charmeleon, I might do it, but I don't think I did. Both corners are so full of energy that there's no doubt this will be a great battle. No, I didn't. Okay, we're just gonna go in. Try that again. Game, set, and match. The blue corner lost. The challenger was defeated. What a shame. Victory was so close. I know, I know. It's okay, we got perfect points. Uh, the way to differentiate between my Pokemon and theirs, if it's the same one, there's a ring around the Pokemon um, that's blue or red, depending on like the player. So blue is player one, red's player two. So the Charmeleon with the blue ring around it was mine. From the blue corner, Pidgeot, Dragonair. And from the red corner, Apom, Wartortle. Right. Here they come. And now, I don't want to double up begins. on Wartroll yet because I don't want to put him in Torrent. <laughs> but... Ooh, right from the start. that's good. Take it out already. So we can just chalk this up to a, just a really slow fight, just pretend I didn't mess up the wheel. Everything's fine. <laughs> Look at all that damage he did. Man. Sent out. The red corner has already taken some serious damage. However, this battle is just getting started. Ivysaur is sent out. Um, oh no! And I've lost done. that roll. Like I, I th it's like a one out of three. I've lost it like four times. <laughs> The move fails. Well, both corners still have a chance to win this. Who's going to take the glory? It attacked itself again. Five times. That has <laughs> got to hurt. A fierce blow. It's a direct hit. I didn't even kill the war turtle. Now it's in super torrent. <laughs> I don't know what is happening Spinda here. Still can pull off a move. <laughs> I actually don't know what's happening with Spinda. A little confused by that part. Dude! <laughs> what a fight. It's not even really going that bad. I'm just getting kind of bad luck. What is happening? <laughs> Actually, I'm a little confused. <laughs> I don't know what's happening to Spinda. I hope they're okay. Can they end this quickly? The blue corner calls their Pokemon back. Dragonair is sent out. It snapped out of its confusion. Oh. <laughs> Probably dead this turn. Fierce blow! Such amazing power! Slander! Dang. <laughs> it couldn't take it! It's down! Yeah, Spinda finally hit. I don't know what was going on with Spinda. That was really weird. Charmeleon is sent out. Well, both corners still have a chance to win this. Who's going to take the glory? Um, whatever. A fierce 
Whoa, it's a direct hit. Pidgeotto restored its health and feels the relief. Pidgeotto. I think, uh, I think, I, I'm pretty sure I missed it, but I'm pretty sure this announcer, wow, I didn't even kill it, dude. I was like, if I don't kill it, Dragonair sucks. And guess what, guys? I did say it earlier. Dragonair does suck. He's getting a little trolled here, no biggie. An exhausting battle between both sides. Oh my gosh. <laughs> the battle has reached its final stage, and the tension is peaking. <laughs> Game's being a little silly now, huh? It wants to be a little silly. It couldn't take it. It's down. Uh, at least I didn't get hit in, for like the sixth time in a row. I killed it, wow. A huge amount of damage. It's down. The battle has ended. The blue corner has won the game. So recently, um, the Japanese version of the game has gotten its own leaderboard for this game. Um, actually, let me. I always start talking right before the wheel. Hold on a second. Let me not mess up the wheel again. The floor is not that bad, though. Um... Right. They just keep getting Dragonair, man. <laughs> not even my fault. <laughs> Um, but the Japanese version uh, does have qu like not like a lot of differences, but there are a bit of differences. Um, one of those differences is that there's a lot of there's a well, there's a couple different. Um, let me do. Let me just see what what's this sunflower has over here. Not sure what the best uh, thing to do for the Dragonair. Other than just wiggle up, get everything else out of the way, and then kill Dragonair. <laughs> if it paralyzes uh, Pidgeot, that'd be not a bad idea. Hey, that does damage. Well, both corners oh, yeah, still have a about. chance to win this. Who's okay. going to take the glory? Who else did I get? Okay. Oh, no, I didn't get it. Let me just get these solar beams ready. <laughs> Um, so, Rosie, uh, Sashe, and uh, who is a, a Coliseum leader later on, and I believe another character, they changed the skin tone. <laughs> so in the in this version of the game, they have a darker uh, complexion, and um, in the Japanese version, for whatever reason, they have a uh, they're just like super white. They're just white. <laughs> And it's very weird and bizarre. Charmeleon is sent out. The red corner evened up the amount of remaining Pokemon. I got kind of bad luck here with the. Uh... The well, I also played wrong. I got the. <laughs> got uh, some flora, and then I just kind of messed it around. I wasn't exactly burn. sure what to do here. Burn's not bad. That'll help. Para wouldn't be bad. 
Ah, I was expecting that. I'm gonna swap him out. I don't want him to die. Horn seems to be in pain. This could get dangerous if it lasts too long. The blue corner calls their Pokemon back. They played really smart uh, this Neon for the most part. I was I was having to really think this Neon, and I didn't really do the best job, but I did okay. Aerial Ace hits. It couldn't take it. It's down. I was hoping it would just uh, stick to Pidgeot and just do Dig or do uh, Ice Fang. But it's okay. You fly is sent out. We're just gonna go for the, the butterfly. Uh, be the fly. We're gonna fake out. I wonder how this is going to affect the battle. And then we're gonna help Still again, I think. To <laughs> it hits. Huge amount of damage. It's the burn's helping though. <laughs> Rhyhorn cannot move. Rhyhorn suffers from its burn. And this is the Coliseum leader, so Red this was the last fight, so that's good. Their backs against the wall. Rhyhorn will be lucky to get through this crisis. Hope I do good. <laughs> I mean, I'm pretty sure I'll kill with burn Hit. if I don't kill. This is not a favorable matchup. Which I might not. Yeah, burn will kill. Thanks, burn. A smashing blow. It sure did. Alrighty. GG's. <laughs> Neon. That was a rough one. But we made it through. The battle has ended. The blue corner pulled off an impressive victory. The challenger won the fortune battle. So we haven't made it to um we haven't made it to uh one of the coliseums that I made a save file for in case something bad happened. But this next one, uh, I do have one for that. There's, I only have like three files that I could make for backup files in case anything bad happened. So I had to kind of toss up between one or the other. And I decided to do this one just because uh, the Coliseum leader for this one is pretty inconsistent. But it can work if I get a little good luck. Uh, I'm playing this on the Wii U, but this came out on the Wii. Playing it on the Wii U because there may or may not be a little bit better loading times for that. For the console. So yeah. <laughs> but for this Coliseum, the gimmick um, is it Crystal Coliseum. is like a tournament bracket. Um, so we don't always play... Sorry, I'm clearing my throat. We don't always play the same uh, teams every every single turn, every single like run. So the first match is always going to be the same, but uh, fight two, three, and four are just it's a it's a from a pool, um, and the pool gets bigger after every I didn't need that crit after every um, after every fight. So for fight two, it's between two people. For fight three, it's between four people, and for fight. Uh, Four is between like eight or something like that. that hurt. Is sent out. Uh, I didn't get the it's best RNG here, so I'm gonna swap out uh, Ivysaur, I think, maybe. Yeah, I'm gonna swap out Ivysaur for Charmian right now. Has already taken some serious damage, but there is always a chance of a comeback. We uh, you typically want to get like a Rhyhorn lead. That's why you start with Ivysaur. Um, but this isn't a this isn't this team isn't that great. They have Celio, which is also why you lead with Ivysaur just in case they bring it. Um, 
but usually they have it earlier on, so if they anchor Celio, that's pretty rare. Let's see how it goes in case what they bring out last though. Hit, but this is not a favorable matchup. Uh, I don't really play Romax, but I will say that there's a Pokemon Rumble fan game. Um, Pokemon Rumble is a WiiWare game, and um, the fan game added the Generations 2 and 3 Pokemon that were... Um, actually, I'm going to put in more Turtle. I'm gonna I want to try and get perfect points here so that I don't, like... Uh, I have perfect points for the... Uh, Coliseum leader, because again, the Coliseum leader for this uh, for this Colo is pretty inconsistent. So, oh nice! I think my I'm pretty sure my Charmeleon has a, has above average attack, if not plus attack. Um, that's good. I'm gonna get a quick kill here. After all these animations. <laughs> Charmeleon starts to attack. It hits. But if you like shiny hunting and um, you like just like kind of walk around beat em up games, I recommend it. It's very fun. There's a lot of content in it. Lots of shiny Pokemon. The game is now Pokemon over. Rumble itself it's is a, a fun totally game, and it just adds corner. more Pokemon to it and an extra area, so it's it's cool. Alrighty, so we got and we got Linda, which is the better one. Yeah, that's good. So, um, obviously. Each trainer has a different team, so some teams are better to fight against than others. For fight two, we want Linda over Hayden. Uh, Linda just has a worse team, weaker team. Ivysaur and War Turtle just destroys her whole team, so you just hope she brings the ones that die quicker. But she did. Onyx will outspeed us, but at least we'll kill it in one shot. And now, the battle begins. The red corner makes the first attack. A small hit. Uh, the only thing you don't want her to bring is Bastiodon, really. Nosepass can uh, survive a hit, but it's fine if she brings it, if, it if she does. Already. But those are the two that will survive. Everything else will die in one shot. Okay, no Bastion, that's really good. We're gonna hit the Rhyhorn with Ivysaur, because Ivysaur is weaker. Bam! Taken down by an intense blow. If I get a crit, I kill. I don't kill either way, I don't think. Or, uh, you know, otherwise. Let's see. Hey! Taken down by an Thank you. We are currently four for five, or four out of five, or not four out of five. Four good crits, five bad, five bad crits. <laughs> I get tongue tied a lot. Sorry. Uh, I think we're doing Cody. Yep, Cody's not terrible. He has an interesting team, but not too not not a great team. So they we can definitely get him pretty quickly. But um, Machoke's kind of a trouble, kind of an issue. Didn't lead to the down. From the blue corner, Delibird, Celio, such energy. 
Interesting lead. Celio is not the best, but we can deal with it. The stage is set and the curtain is up. Bam! A brilliant attack right from the start. Take it out already. The move That's ideal. That does have ice ball and they do like to use it. Sometimes they just don't. But it likes to miss, so damage. that's kind of However, fun. That doesn't. <laughs> and I, I kind of, I never really mentioned it, but um, it kind of piggybacks onto the conversation again of uh, the move sets and and the, like the move the um, coverage that Cindy's team has is just not as good as Nate. Um, it even goes into the moves that we have to our like to offer. Um, and is also why War Turtle is not too bad because it has the same move, like main attacking move as Pid, uh, Prinplup does. But Charmeleon has Fire Fang and Monferno has Fire Punch, so Fire Punch is just better. And it's just kind of unfair to Charmeleon <laughs> that his main attacking move is not 100% accurate. Not a big downfall to the to this team. I think I should sunny day. <laughs> hail, hail takes a lot of time. So, hoping I kill those, but. Mm. Okay, that's good. At least. I'll uh, swap swap the way I attack there. A harsh battle is taking place. It's always a risk to use like moves that aren't attacking in this game. Heart setting up is hard. <laughs> you don't have too much extra time to do things other than just deal damage and get ahead of them. I'm just gonna Dragon Rage Gibble because it's the fastest animation. So yeah, the the fights two through four is just random. So um, even when I have like splits or whatever, like whatever, I usually just like combine two, three, and four into one just to see what the outcome is. Because it's just inconsistent to have full splits of like that. It's definitely not like rare to get like good, um, get good cycles or good fights or whatever. Get like fight two, and then this is probably one of the better ones. Even though I'm not getting great RNG here, this is probably one of the better ones for this uh, uh, for fight fights three. And then if you get like a good fight four, it's not uncommon, but just a lot can happen. Especially with Cindy's team. The battle has ended. It's a total victory for the blue corner. All right, so now it's on the other side of bracket and Carissa, the first one. Double input there. Love to see it. <laughs> Krissa isn't too bad of a fight. She does have Rotom, which is annoying, but other than that, it's uh, pretty, pretty doable. The battle begins! Brilliant attack right from the start. Take it out already. Its invasiveness rose. Snowbird is 
sent out. It started to hail in the Coliseum. The red corner has already taken some serious damage. However, this battle is just getting started. Bam! A huge amount of damage! It's down! Its attack fell! I'm glad I hit. I did use double team. <laughs> that was weird. I think that's probably other instances of how the announcer being off probably saves some time, because it probably does take extra time to load in the announcer clips every time, so... Oh, that's what that looks like. Um... The blue corner calls their Pokemon back. This the the Celio right anchor. Now he's locked into it. I'm just gonna use Sunny Day and uh, Shockwave. A chilling breeze can be felt in the Coliseum. Gonna take some time, and I don't feel like having to watch the, the hail hurt my team only. <laughs> It should die next turn now. Regardless if it would have been the same either way. The battle has reached its final stage. Solid hit. Celio just got burned. Second hit and goes down. Alrighty. The game is not bad at all. Over. It's a and I think I got a bunch of perfect corner. points for that as well, which is very good. <laughs> I definitely need it. This is one of the hardest fights in the game coming up here. Coliseum leader. This is a pretty a shorter Coliseum. So we're gonna do Pidgeot lead, Charmeleon, uh, Dragonair. I, I, you can also bring um, War Turtle instead of Dragonair. You can do Rhyhorn Charmeleon instead of Rhyhorn Pidgeot. It's there's a lot of different variations you can do the here. Um, we just kind of hope that they, sh they don't bring Rotom. Kind of don't want them to bring um, Machoke out either. Oh, the blue corner. Great. Rhyhorn, All right, Pidgeot. so. Rotom Rot. That's not the worst thing, but it's not great. I'm hoping that they didn't attack uh, Pidgeot here. They can't use electric type moves because uh, Rhyhorn has Lightning Rod, but it does have other moves, but sometimes it's stupid, so that's good. Good. It double missed. Love to see it. That's what we need to happen. A brilliant hit. It was frozen solid. Okay. The red corner had their Pokemon frozen solid after the battle began. I'm gonna take if advantage of that. Um, I don't know if I bite here. I think I do bite here. A fierce blow. Such amazing power! Massive no, it's damage. smart. 
doesn't kill, but it's smart. Onyx, frozen solid, and I just need that to keep frozen. That's that's some good luck there. I need to hold on to it. Nicely done. Rotom. All right, I outspeed it, so I'll outspeed this next turn here. I can dig Onyx. Uh, I'll just buy it, whatever. Make sure I kill it. I'm not pretty sure that, that it would have been under 40 health. <laughs> it couldn't take it. It's down. Okay, we dealt with the Rotom pretty pretty well, so that's good. Okay, that's okay. Warhound can tank that. Who is he bringing out? Hmm, okay. I gotta instantly go for that. A fierce blow. It's a direct hit. Rhyhorn can clean that up, but it's he's kinda low on health and a little scared there. Ooh, stop Slam hitting. Him. No! <laughs> it needs to not hit more than it's three times there. But I did kill, uh, I should kill the Onyx here. Starts to attack, but the target Pokemon is underground. Okay. <laughs> Slam them. Taken uh, down by an intense blow. A choke is sent out. Oh my gosh. <laughs> okay. Dragonair is sent out. I'm gonna protect. Well, both corners still have a chance to win this. What kind of developments can we expect to see next? I don't. I hope I kill that thing. I don't know if I do, but itself. hoping I do. He brought a hard team to fight against. Matang still can pull off a move. Please. But this is not a favorable matchup. <laughs> He didn't go for Rhyhorn either. Uh, this is looking spooky, guys. I'm not sure about this one. I might lose this fight. Dragonair restored its health and feels the relief. Um. Matang starts to attack. Slam them. It's down and out. It hits. Okay, I can kill him a choke next turn with Pidgeot. Bam. I just don't know if I uh, if I win. A huge amount of damage. It's down. The Machoke's rough. Come on, Pidgeot. This will be huge. The wall. The rest is up to the last Pokemon. Hit. You can tank those. Aerial Ace hits. It's down and out. I, I don't know if I kill next turn, but I think I do. I, I just... Pokemon from each team will take the field. He has Both so little health. Are in a tough spot. Oh! Bam! Let's go! Okay, he didn't lose. <laughs> it couldn't take it! It's down! Very nice. The results are in. The blue corner narrowly escaped defeat. The challenger. Very true. Very true. Battle. All right, we got out of crystal. I didn't have to use one of the save files. On to Sunny Park. So Sunny Park is a very, uh, very neutral uh, coliseum. It's just some double battles. That's really the only gimmick to it. It's just double battles. 
I guess there's a lot of uh, particular kinds of Pokemon, but um, I guess this can kind of go into um, earlier in the run. I mentioned that there are certain like fights and Coliseums or whatever that seem to be helpful for certain types and certain Pokemon on the rental type or on the rental Poke Pokemon passes. Um, and uh, this Coliseum seems to be really um, like good if you have Rhyhorn. Um, there's a lot of, of electric types on here. Um, here we go. And there's not much they can do once Rhyhorn's on on screen. They can definitely like lower stats and stuff, but they can't really do too much else. So it's kind of cool. The stage is set and the curtain is up. The blue corner makes the first attack. A rigid shot. The move Neat. <laughs> yeah, it can do that. So it can definitely like lower attack sometimes, which then you like adjust accordingly. But uh, there's other there's a lot of other options that they can go for before lowering stats that matter. So we just hope that they don't mess up the stats that matter. <laughs> Oh wow, I didn't get the range. Delcati still can pull off a move. Its accuracy fell. Good thing I have aerial Rushing blow. A huge amount of damage. There's gonna be a lot of wiggly tufts in this Coliseum as well. Wigglytuff, um, Pokemon like Wigglytuff, Poliwhirl, uh, Celio, Lickitung, kinda. Um, those Pokemon are like really, um, what's, what's the, they're just really like, uh, annoying to deal with in the run, especially with the Pokemon that we have. Like, it's just really hard to deal with them. So, um, we typically just try not to, like, we, we hope we don't get them in the battles. Um, and then there's sometimes big indicators of like if you got a good fight or not. Um, so we pretty much like hope we don't get some of those bad Pokemon like um, um, like Wigglytuff. Staravia is kind of it's not the worst, but it lowers our attack, which is kind of annoying. Um, the, there's Machoke in this in this Coliseum. Um, and there's also like a like hidden like gravelers and stuff like that, so you have to make sure you have a Pokemon that's able to kill those those bulky physical defensive Pokemon. Blow. Taken down by an intense blow. So I get like the team layout for these uh, fights are generally a little bit more um, balanced for the AI. Uh, this first one is not, <laughs> but the other ones they have. Uh, Quite a, quite a like couple Pokemon that can make us lose some time, or even just like have to change up the layout. Also, when you um, like after you beat Sunny uh, Sunny Park. You, you're able to unlock all of the other um, nice <laughs> all of the other uh, the once peaceful air is now rental passes tension at the appearance of such intense Pokemon um, once you beat waterfall you unlock the first the other two I guess so there's six total so you get start with two you unlock two after waterfall and then you unlock the last two after sunny park. Sent out. The stage is set and the curtain is up. The red corner makes the first attack. A solid hit. Very nice. His defense rolls. Wiggly tough doing they thing. Yeah, this is like one of the worst the leads you can get. In the nope. Because they're annoying. <laughs> Solid hit. Oh, 
blue version. Okay. Its accuracy fell. Its attack missed. Come on, Rhyhorn. <laughs> we gotta be hitting them. So yeah, ideally you would just have them not bring Wigglytuff. You can you can have them bring Staravia, but it's kind of annoying. Um, Machoke is also not I ideal, but you can deal with Machoke if you don't have Staravia. Um, Staravia is more in, like all in, like overall bad for the for the game. So. No, dude. It attacked itself yes. again. That <laughs> has got to hurt. No. The move can't hit the opponent. Not much has happened. Who will change things up? This call seam also is a big showcase Star to like Star the attack. the game is going to start getting difficult now. Um, yeah. Nate's pass again being a little better. Um, is a, is not not quite able to fully cover late game. Like it's still hard to do with just Nate. Um, but Cindy's Pokemon just is really hard to get those one shots. There's a lot more ranges that start showing up in late game. Um, so we're gonna start seeing a lot of like innovation, a lot of uh, trial and error, maybe <laughs> missing. But there's some pretty cool uh, late game strats as well. Like one of the harder Coliseums is pretty consistent with uh, Cindy's pass for just mainly because of uh, my horn. And Dragonair's uh, bulk and type coverage is is okay as well, which helps. Um, some of the more difficult fights in that, in that later call scene. Such amazing Dude, he hit me. Roselia is sent out. Okay. The blue corner currently leads. Can they end this quickly? Wait, I'm, I'm gonna do this. Hopefully they don't go for him, but yeah, it's fine. Oh! Okay. Again, sometimes AI is not smart. It could have just done that to Rhyhorn and killed me, but... Yeah, I just decided to not kill Rhyhorn. Decided to lower my really slow speed already. Alrighty. <laughs> And if you if there is uh, if you ever are curious about learning this game or um, just anything I guess like that, there's a lot of notes I've done. Uh, I've made a lot of notes for different variations of speedrunning the game using Cindy. I have notes for um, not the most like fully in depth notes, but it's just like picking uh, what what team is the best team to pick and. Um, is up to the last sometimes Pokemon. like certain notes for each team if like there's a certain like a Pokemon with an item that I want you to make note of or something like that there's there's some note of that but there's also really like really enough notes for any percent and all battle passes um, and the Japanese version has its own leaderboard which it's a pretty cool um, version of the game um, it's a bit faster with like loading and text and um, stuff like that but it's also got a bit of a different um, set of Pokemon in the Coliseum that's after this one, which is pretty cool. I'll get into that later.
so there's tons of uh tons of documents um to read <laughs> or to use at your disposal when you're doing a run if you decide to do a run um but it's definitely doable, even if it's just blind, because all you gotta do is read the notes, play some Pokemon, Both corners are so have a good time. Lickitung is not great, but it's okay. Again, Lickitung is one of those Pokemon that's like kind of annoying, but it's not as common as Wigglytuff, but it's just about as bulky. A little less, but... <laughs> it's down already. Got the range there, that's good. A little more defensive, okay. Duty hit supersonic. <laughs> Charmeleon became confused. Bronzor is sent no, out. I knew it. <laughs> well, both corners still have a chance to win this. Snap what out kind of it. Developments can we expect to see next? Oh no, no dude, itself. not this. The return. Oh, okay, I'll take a crit though. I'll take a crit. A huge amount of damage. It's down. For five good crits, five bad crits for this round. Hit. A gnome is sent out. The blue corner currently leads. Can they end this quickly? Attacked itself again. That has got to Dude. Hurt. I'm losing the a that percentage blow. a lot. Amazing power. Unknown restored its health and feels the relief. Oh. It's being ganged up on. Well, both corners still have a chance to win this. Who's going to take the glory? It snapped out of its confusion. Hey. <laughs> a little too late, bud. A fierce blow. Bronzor. That's not a one shot. On. That one didn't matter. <laughs> it's down and out. The battle has ended. It's a total victory for the blue corner. A lot of the time we're having to work around like a Staravia um, Wigglytuff kind of deal. This one just has some water types that we have to worry about. So we have to bring Ivysaur for it. It does have Wigglytuff, but um, they're like other choice Pokemon instead of like Staravia, Machoke. Um, they brought Poliwhirl and Love Disk and Silcoon, of course. Yes, Both of course. Silcoon. Are so full of energy <laughs> that there's no doubt this will be a great battle. And now the battle begins. But it's a good lead. Hit. A brilliant attack right from the start. It's down already. A fierce blow. Butterfree barely holds on. I missed the range, dude. It's special attack. Bell. Wormadam is 
sent out. Okay. The red corner has we got good luck here. Some serious damage. Look at that, is that 0 0.5 HP? At least it used Captivate on my Pidgeot. Well, At least that. Still have a chance to win this. What kind of developments can we expect to see next? A beautiful attack. Well, I think that might do enough. I got a good damage roll here. Let's go. That was good, Logan. A pretty much perfect Logan, actually. Because they uh, they just didn't bring Poliwhirl and uh, Wigglytuff, which are the ones you don't want them to bring. That was fast. Got another, uh, <clears throat> sorry, got another, uh, Staravia, Graveler, Machoke, Wigglytuff team. Okay, alright, that's okay. I am going... From the blue corner, Pidgeot, War Turtle. And from the red corner, I'm going to kill them. Graveler, such energy. Charmeleon is sent out. The battle begins. The red corner makes the first attack. That hurt. Sent out. Oh, come on. The red corner has already taken some serious damage, but there is always a chance of a comeback. Charmeleon starts to attack. Hit that hurt. Oh. Nicely done. Charmeleon faces a great guy, Charmeleon. became confused. Okay. Hey, you Oh no! Let's go. It attacked itself. Well, both corners still have a chance to win this. What kind of developments can we expect to see okay. next? Now I don't mind if Charmeleon dies. <laughs> Slam them. Nice, nice fire fang. Let's go. Killed. Thank you, Blaze. Hey, this isn't going too bad. <laughs> a rare instance where uh, a fight with Wigglytuff can go okay. Charmeleon starts to attack. Pretty sure I kill this round or this turn. Fierce blow! It's a direct hit. Because it has such a great and feels the relief. A rigid shot. We'll get the it next red time. Corner <laughs> cannot move. Oh, the, the rare flame. Stage, and the tension is peaking. Go. Nicely done. Macho faces Big a great killing. deal. <laughs> I was like, this might not kill, but I'm just gonna go for it because I don't want to miss. Second hit and goes down. Right, that was a pretty good Hannah. 
they brought like a bunch of Pokemon we don't want them to bring, and we did okay. All right, we're almost done with uh, Sunny Park. We're on the last two. So, uh, return to of uh, the electric types that so we're gonna bring Rhyhorn. They're also brought. Uh, they also have um, Celio. So we're just bringing Ivysaur. From the blue corner, Rhyhorn, Hijiot. Pretty good lead and here. And from the red corner, oh. Delibird, Hachirisu. Here they come. The battle begins. The red corner makes the first attack. It hits two Pokemon at once. A fierce blow. Such amazing power. Delibird receives There's a range. And <laughs> Didn't get it. The I probably got air release there, but that's fine. <laughs> Crushing blow! It went down! Hachirisu starts to attack, but the target Pokemon is underground. Smile. Slap. Love to see it. Taken down. It's a freebie. It's, it's a, a little slow freebie, but it's a freebie. And that's really all we can ask for in a low percent run, right? Nice little freebie. Who is it? Who is it? Okay. Well, both corners still have a chance to win this. Who's going to take the glory? I can kill Luxio with a crit. I probably kill a Plusle with a crit too, but. I know I can kill Luxio with a grid. <laughs> a fierce blow! Such amazing power! The substitute appears! Aw. At least I didn't use Dig on Luxio then. It's helping hand substitute? <laughs> I just realized that. Alright, that's fine too. Encore saves time, pretty much, unless you don't want them to use the move. But it just makes it so I don't have to do menuing. It hit the substitute. So, thank you. It literally skips the whole screen of having to select a move. Its defense fell. Bam! And it's dead. Taken down by an intense blow. Very nice. Stands with their backs against the wall. Luxio will be lucky to get through this crisis. See, attack. All right, this last fight, the Coliseum leader, is really the only hard fight in this uh, in the Colo. So hopefully it goes okay. We'll see. There's a lot of stuff that can happen, really. So we'll just, yeah, we'll just see what happens. That was a good fight. Almost golded that. You don't have the best team layout for this, uh, the challenger for her team, but Rhyhorn, Charmeleon Pidgeot does do a pretty opponent. good job against them. You just need to get a little good luck and play play well. Um, okay, so what we're gonna corner, do is attack. Charmeleon. And from the red corner, and Sunny Day. Shuckle. Here they come. The stage is set and the curtain is up. Kind of a weird lead. It's kind of bad, but I was expecting them to do a high jump kick. 
situation is a bit of a stalemate. It's mm -hmm. a mental tug of war as they anticipate each other's move. The sun's rays have suddenly intensified. They typically use high jump kick, um, turn one sushi. Definitely just or jump kick. They just definitely Oh, what? Wow. Flop Honey is uh, the one you don't want her to bring. The air in the Coliseum is deal with everything else. A fierce blow. Lopany barely Ooh. holds on. I thought I killed it, but dang. Hit both it jump kicks. Down. Really didn't want my Charmeleon alive. But it is dead. Rushing blow. So that's good. It couldn't survive the second hit and goes down. An exhausting battle between both sides. It's whatever. Jerim is sent out. Okay, yeah. Pidgeot is sent out. I'm gonna protect this turn just to be safe with Rhyhorn. I just wanna be safe. Sunlight in the Coliseum is blinding. I wonder how this is going to affect the battle. Because Jerem's definitely gonna sol solar beam Rhyhorn. And uh I should kill it. I don't think I don't I'm pretty sure I do kill it, but um in case I don't. Yeah, I don't know why I didn't kill it, but Rhyhorn we protected, so. From the I feel like my attack stat is probably not good enough to get that consistently. But I typically don't have to do that. I usually can have Vermilion do it, but Vermilion's dead, so. We did it. <laughs> Chuckle's always a waste. It just takes a little to kill, but it's not too bad. Yeah. Well, both that mining can't do anything. Who's going to take the glory? Chuckle. Not my special defense. Rhyhorn burrowed its way underground. Shuckle starts to attack, but the target Pokemon is underground. Well, both corners still have a chance to win this. Who's going to take the glory? Dragonair is sent out. Alright, so we should have this one uh, down. We just gotta get. Um, get. <clears throat> shuckle done. <laughs> but after this Coliseum is uh, where I have the next save file for in case something goes wrong. So, <laughs> we're gonna hope something, nothing goes wrong. But it's a, a lot of luck. We actually don't aren't even going to use any of the Pokemon on 
on Natalie, or not Natalie, sorry, on uh, Cindy's pass. Natalie is the one of the late game passes that you can get. Oh. Well, that's cool. The damage caused by poison is slowly increasing. We take those, I guess. It, it does not do that. Like, I've never even seen it use that. GG Shuckle. It couldn't survive the second hit and goes down. Game, set, and match. And also for this first fight that we're going into, um, there's been a recent strat that I've been kind of testing, and we're gonna we're gonna do it. We're doing it this run, so. <laughs> gonna be cool because it seems to be very consistent as long as you just don't get bad luck in the first turn that's all you need <laughs> all right sunset so this coliseum its gimmick is that it gives you a random pool of pokemon um And you just pick uh, your team of four out of the 12 random. Uh, it's not completely random. Um, probably should have brought Staravia instead of Graveler, but that's okay. Um, so it's always going to be the same 12 with a variation of like a couple of them like sometimes Staravia is not going to be there sometimes Graveler isn't there sometimes Plusle isn't there but um uh, Rotom, Vulpix um I got a bunch of them all, all, the, all the other ones there they're always going to be there so you can always like like I like route to use those Pokemon and then like sometimes if there's a good Pokemon that's not always there if it shows up you can use it Scarvia is definitely one of those Pokemon I'd say okay Monferno can use a Torment which is really annoying <laughs> so I'm glad it didn't do that So the strap for this fight is we start with Rotom. We have Plusle to do Helping Hand because Helping Hand uh, Ominous Wind boost is pretty good. Does a lot of damage to everybody else. And if they were to bring Rotom and I do um, Helping Hand uh, um, Ominous Wind to the Rotom, it'll one shot it. So it's helpful for that. <laughs> They didn't lead it, so usually if he doesn't lead it, he didn't bring it, but I'll, he can definitely still bring it. Well, both corners still have a chance to win this. What kind of developments can we expect to see next? I want to get rid of the Vulpix, because Vulpix is pretty good too. We kind of want them to not be attacking the Rotom like this, but... It is what it is. <laughs> a fierce blow. It's a direct hit. An exhausting battle between Fine. both sides. The Coliseum is burning with excitement. Russell starts to attack. Hit, but this is not a favorable matchup. So we're pretty much hoping for no, like, Rotom Anchor. Everything else is fine. And also, we want to. I'm going to try my best to get perfect points in these fights. Um, they're really crucial. This is a, a very short policy, and there's only four fights in it, including the, the leader. Um, okay, that's fine. 
Um, helping hand. I should I should be able to live. So I can swap these Pokemon out. Didn't need that crit. Taken down by an intense blow. But we got him. It hit two Pokemon at once. Oh, thank you, Plusle. The battle has reached its final stage, and the tension is peaking. The blue corner calls their Pokemon back. I didn't get an Om uh, Omni Boost, which is unfortunate. Those are very helpful if you can get even one. That's very, very nice. Pretty much a secured win, unless they get also good luck. <laughs> okay, I'm just gonna swap out Plusle, and then um, Victory Bell has like no good moves, so it doesn't really matter what it's doing right now. I don't think I kill it this turn, but I might. Uh, I don't think I do, but if I get a crit, I might. Or I will if I get a crit, sure. But... Yeah. But not bad. Not bad. We got a perfect point out of it, so that's good. It's a little slow, but it's uh, honestly not too, not too slow. In this next fight, the second fight that we're going to do is the most consistent one out of the four. So it can definitely go bad. <laughs> they can uh, troll you a little bit, but for the most part, it's the most consistent. So. And it's kind of funny. But this is a, a big reset point for for people, especially when you're doing like like world record attempts or whatever, trying to get a good time. Um, it's just a, you can get you can just lose so much time so easily here. All right, so I want to start with the two dragons, and then I want to bring Shelgon and Combuskin. Um, the pool of Pokemon on this fight aren't too great, um, but Dragon Rage is really busted in this uh, particular Coliseum. So uh, two Pokemon, Chimchar and Combuskin, they the die in two Dragon Rages. It's truly moving. This is a really rough lead they did here. The um, the hopefully the they, they don't the troll me. Attack. But... Um, so you hope they bring one of like one or both of them, um, but the Dragonair and the Gabite is usually what is brought from both sides, because uh, Dragon Rage is really really good in this fight. Um, okay, all right. I have Shed Skin, so I can get rid of that. Ah, sucks. Okay. Okay, I got the Shed Skin off. That's good. Dragon Age. I'll just. Dragonair protects itself. I'll just swap protect off. It's not really good idea to swap them out, especially at this moment. It went down. I got to get rid of their Dragon Rage Pokemon. They can still have Goodbye, and it's usually they do, but I just hope they don't. Did he double torment? He double tormented. <laughs> Patrol. Combuskin is sent out. Okay. I didn't mean really to do that. Uh, I'm gonna. bite starts to attack. A smashing blow. You don't normally see double torment, but. 
Typically, you try to kill him before he's able to do double torment. But I just gotta swap off, it's fine. Multiple hits. It keeps dealing damage. Does Victory Bill have a slow attack? Uh, I'm not sure what you mean by a slow attack, but Victory Bill is only attacking with his acid. So it has like Swords Dance, um, like uh, Sweet Scent or whatever, um, and like. <laughs> Something else. An acid. Maybe captivate instead of sweet sweet sun. I think it's captivate. The bite is sent out. The blue corner currently leads. Can they end this quickly? The goodbye anchor is rough, but we can deal with it. We're just gonna leave co this combust canal probably. A small hit. Dragonair restored its health and feels the relief. That hurt. Can we expect to see next? Dragonair protects itself. Um, typically with with Victor Bell, you just kill it because it it dies in two shots with um with Vulpix. I was trying to get crits <laughs> so I could make it like a one turn kill. Nice growl. The battle has reached its final stage. Oh! So I think I might be able to get a perfect point here, which is nice. slow but we, we got out with another perfect point which is good it's down and out. The this next fight is probably the hardest one um and well i think um the hardest one execution wise is dusty probably but this next one is the hardest one in terms of like the pokemon you have to deal with and you have to use is like annoying so We hope for an electric type to show up. We did not get one. It's very rare for that to happen. Otherwise, we go for kind of a similar I like um, pool of Pokemon, Combuskin, um, 
and Graveler, because we didn't really get too many great Pokemon in that list of Pokemon either. You can get like Krikatoon and Butterfree that are okay as well. I don't think we got either of those. Um, but you want like a Luxio or a Flaffy to show up. Those are very nice. Um, this is an interesting lead though. You just want them to not bring Pelipper, because Pelipper is just really bulky and it's impossible to kill them um, without a, an electric type. Um, and not impossible, they're just like really hard. Okay. But um, them not, even them not leading it is honestly not, is like pretty good. So we'll take that. So at least we can deal with uh, two of their Pokemon quickly, Oops. and we can worry about the last two after. Because when when Pelipper's on the field, it's just really annoying, and Volpix is a ticking time bomb, just waiting to get water pulsed. So. Okay, I think I needed that crit to kill. Taken down by an intense blow. Not a bad lead, not a bad lead. Is sent out. Ah yeah, there's the anchor. Combuscan is sent out. Okay. Well, both corners still have a chance to win this. Who's We're gonna going confuse Ray Pelipper and uh water pulse combustion. And try and get a little lucky here. Hopefully, Pelipper hits himself once or twice. <laughs> a fierce blow. Combuskin barely holds on. Oh no! Okay. It attacked itself. Now I'm gonna hope for a burn. Again, it, I think it's better to get to have them anchor Pelipper, um, just because you get to deal with the rest of the team. It's down All right, cool. Do it again. You won't. Hey, you did it again. Hey. All right, keep it going. Keep it going. I'm not gonna swap out. I'm just gonna hope he doesn't go for Vulpix or something. Just got hey, let's go. <laughs> Third time's a charm? Oh my god. <laughs> this is making up for earlier, where I hit myself like six times in a row. GG, <laughs> GG. I'll do a. Uh, Change the move. Alright. GG. We got another perfect point. And even though they brought Pelipper, we got to deal with it uh, better because it wasn't a starter. A lead, if you will. Alright. Three perfect points. That's like the best situation we can have going into this. So your lead can kind of vary depending on the strat that you want to use here, but your team was always going to be the same. Luxio, Vigoroth, Gabite, Gravile, those are just the best four to select from. Um, sometimes Dusty will pick the same four because they're just really good. Sometimes he won't. That's ideal. Um, I like to lead Luxio because uh, Luxio has Intimidate. Okay, he brought, uh, okay, interesting lead. From the blue corner, 
Luxio, so, um, Luxio and Gabite have a bit of a speed tie. Typically, Gabite will outspeed Luxio, but sometimes Luxio can outspeed Gabite. So I like to lead him for that as well, and hope I get the speed tie and um, can like get him. Otherwise, um, the I the Pokemon like all these Pokemon have held items, and the Pokemon here have. Oh, that's a bad crit. That's a really bad crit. Okay. I just have to take an L there. Typically, I was going to say, you can sur definitely survive a... Um... Hmm. I don't know. It doesn't matter. Oh, wait, I'm stupid. <laughs> I'm stupid. That was my fault. If I lose, it's on me. I'm really dumb. I don't know why I thought that was gonna pan out. Did I? Might be. Thank you, game, for giving me that. Um. All right. So since I didn't get the damage on Gabite, I kind of have to go into my own Gabite. Uh. He has Dragon Rush as its main attacking move. That's that's the best thing. Um, but it's pretty inaccurate, and I'm also unlucky, so <laughs> hopefully I hit. But there's also a speed tie, so I have to win the speed tie and hit. I lost the speed tie. Okay, he missed. I lost the speed tie. All right. Okay, yeah. So they have uh, berries that weaken dragon-type moves. Luxio has one that weakens ground type moves, which is why I can survive a minus attack Gabite like dig. Gabite is hit. Vigoroth is sent out. The blue corner, even though the one. amount of remaining Pokemon, despite being at a disadvantage, will this turn the tide of the battle? So he brought Vigoroth. He brought um Goodbye. He probably brought uh, Bravile, so he probably just didn't bring Luxio. Sometimes they do like to bring Luxio. Luxio is not bad. It has a good move set and it has Intimidate. So. Yeah. Um. It's gonna be a little close. <sighs> Did not. That was bad crit. I, I could have survived that. Pretty sure. It couldn't survive the second hit and goes down. Okay, thank you. I was gonna say, can I get a crit? That's that's helpful. <laughs> a hard hit from body slam. Taken down Pretty sure we win this. That's not a crit, actually. Thank you, game. with their backs against the wall. The rest is up to the last Pokemon. Ah, he's just ignoring Vigoroth. <laughs> oh, crap. <laughs> a fierce blow. Did a lot more. I think it, that, was a, that was a high roll, for sure. A rigid shot. Apologies if you hear like banging, there's some stuff going on. But anyway, we did it. We didn't even lose a, a game. That was crazy. All right. Love to see it. We got past sunset. So Magma, this is a pretty interesting one. This is a waterfall um, 
bracket. Uh, waterfall is um, basically points. So depending on how many Pokemon you have at the end of each battle, you get a certain amount of points. And uh, if you just have the most points at the end, or tied with the most points at the end before the Coliseum Leader, then you are fine, you can go on. So you are able to skip one fight, at least one fight. But if you get good enough luck, we can skip two fights. And if this was a, if there was a task of it, you would, uh, you could also skip a third fight. Or if you just like wanted to get really good luck, you could skip a third fight. Um, if the AI was playing bad enough, because while we're doing our matches, they're doing their matches as well. So um, uh, lost my train of thought. Sorry. War turtle. So uh, they could just be doing bad. Like I can come out of this and be pretty much like the only person that got like pretty much any points, um, which is good luck. <laughs> so we want the AI to not do well in their own little matches that are off screen and we have nothing to do with. And then we want to also try our best to have three points at the end of each match. It is also possible that the AI just plays insanely good and um, you have to like just not lose because they're playing really good. Okay, that's good ones. Might I might uh, rain dance because of the sandstorm, but we'll see. Ouch! That was rather self eh, Oh, maybe not. We'll see. I might be fine. I just don't want to die. <laughs> Okay, we're fine. Graveler is sent out. A sandstorm is raging in the Coliseum. So we, uh, so we always are gonna going skip like the same battle. fights. The fights aren't different or anything. Low. It's the same order as and all that stuff. You just play everybody that's in the Coliseum from top to bottom, um, and we skip the fights that are that would just take the longest. reached its final stage he survived fierce blow. <laughs> what the red corner barely holds on rude is he at one i mean even i wasn't even looking because i was like oh he's dead that's crazy he's not even at one what happened i got a low roll or something pupitar desperately holds on <laughs> anyway, that was good. Rushing blow. It couldn't take it. It's down. The game is now over. It's a total victory for the blue corner. The blue corner just got their first victory. Okay, so some people got three points, which isn't the best, but it's not bad because a lot of people got zero, which is good. So we're going to do this fight, but we're going to skip the next one as our first fight skip. Okay. Gligar is not the too Pokemon scary right at the moment, but when, later in the in the late game when we see Gligar, it's gonna be a little spooky. <laughs> not my soft sand. A light hit. We uh we use Rhyhorn as like a pseudo ice type in this fight. It's kind of funny. Also, we're back to singles, which forgot to mention, but yeah, we are back to singles, which I feel like Cindy's team is uh, not as good in singles. Um, so it's a little harder to deal with it, but it's a, a, a short Coliseum, especially if you're able to do the fight skips quickly. Um, you can do this this Coliseum in like um, in like ten minutes. Um, I think I'm supposed to. Um, I think I'm supposed to swap. That's a rough one.
You don't want Venomoth. The blue corner calls Venomoth's scary. Is sent out. I mean, I'm always enjoying a good collect them all uh, run from Shen. Well, both or, that's always a fun, a to win this. fun watch. Going to bad crit, dude, bad crit. Come on. A rigid shot. Also, I guess I'm I, I got outsped by Venomoth too, which is rough. A fierce blow. The red corner barely holds on. I don't know if this kills. Okay, good. Venomoth starts to attack. Solid hit. Uh, I I also liked Pokemon Rumble. That was fun. <laughs> and uh, Pokemon Bar Revolution. That was also pretty cool. Victory bells now. Uh, that's a uh, not good. <laughs> I should be fine uh, with War Turtle, but kind of rough. Might have to go into Rhyhorn and try with Rhyhorn. Oh, or that. That can happen. Thank you. Moving on. <laughs> I will take some good luck here and there. I definitely need it. Uh, so starting this Coliseum, Sunset's also difficult, but starting this Coliseum is when we really see the power creep um, for, from our rental pass to the Pokemon that we're fighting. The Pokemon are just stronger. It's harder to kill them and uh, harder to survive. So I'm glad that we were able to touch that three. Yeah. Okay, good. That's one. Someone has six. Who has six? Who has six? Was that Norman that has six? Or is that Christine? What the heck? They're going crazy. We have to watch them. Hopefully they don't get more points. Cause even, so like the only bad side to doing the even one fight skip is that we do give it, okay, Both let's do this. Let's just do this so just to be safe. Sure to so this can, this is to be safe with the Robert specifically. Is. If you don't want Robert to make, like make sure he has like a lead on you, you just kill his lead if it's a graveler and then you give in instead of just giving in right away. And the Corner going to has already taken some serious damage. However, so Robert only got two points instead started. of three the from that fight. Has ended. The blue corner lost. The blue corner has just taken the very first loss. I'm gonna I'm gonna peek uh, who who was a uh, huh. who had six points. Norman, he's at eight now. Okay. <laughs> We have to kind of make sure we don't lose someone here. We try our best. Because at this point, then we'll be um, we'll only one point ahead of Norman. So we, we have to do the last fight. So if we were to have good luck and have them not, like, um, have, like, Norman and all them do not do well in their battles, um, we could skip a second fight. We could skip the last fight right before the Coliseum leader. The stage is set and the curtain is up. The red corner makes But we're not gonna be able to do that. <laughs> the origin of that of that like skip, because we didn't realize you could do that at first. Um, I was watching Poke Hero do runs and they were just talking about how it was okay for them to like not win the battle. Um, because of the waterfall causing boat whatnot and i was like oh so like can you just like give in this fight as well and then they're like oh i guess i never thought about that <laughs> and then started implementing it in runs and uh it is now what it is today the world records for most of the categories or at least like main categories for pbr are pretty good um, low percent is the least optimized because it's pretty inconsistent. Um, what do I do here? I think I just need a brute force Tokatek. 
I can swap into Rhyhorn and do that, but um, I'm going to try to brute force it. It does the same about a damage, and I save a turn from not swapping. So, hope for a crit. It took a takes kind of annoying to deal with. Sleep powder. It fell asleep. <laughs> Dude. <laughs> get it. Restored its health. What the heck? Well, both corners still have a chance to win this. <laughs> Who's going to take the glory? Well, all right, this fight's going to take a little longer. <laughs> Wake up. Oh no. <laughs> the battle rages on. Their concentration is certainly being tested. Well, I got pretty unlucky there. <laughs> so we're just gonna Well, both corners still have a chance to win this. Who's going to take the glory? I'll let this wish fail. Oh, fly! <laughs> I didn't even know it had fly. Okay. Alright. Their concentration is certainly being tested. Hit! That's funny. <laughs> Metronome, Fly, Quite Wish, and Rock Smash. Attack. Okay. That dealt some massive damage. That's my Tokazik. Oh. Be nice to me, game. To Keep it in Frozen. Still is frozen solid. It <laughs> they like the thaw them out right away. They really like doing that in this game. The freeze doesn't count until the next turn. Oh, the crit! Okay, thank you. <laughs> a huge amount of damage! It's down! Charmeleon is sent out. A chilling breeze can be felt in the Coliseum. Chilling breeze? It's because I use Ice Fang. I don't think this kills because of that, but... The red corner attacks! But the target Pokemon is it's okay. Wild. This Charmeleon isn't that good. Blow, the red corner, oh, I, oh, I didn't kill. Dang. The battle has reached its final stage. Sworn attack kill. <laughs> Hit, but this is not a favorable matchup. Nicely done. The red corner oh my a God. Great deal of pressure. <laughs> oh, the attack drop, on. man. The blue corner cannot move. Oh my gosh. <laughs> the red corner faces <laughs> a fatal situation. Don't do this to me. Okay. Determined in the next turn, its attack fell. All right, we we got out of there with uh, three points, so we should be okay. Uh, as long as we don't um, lose two points in this next fight, we'll be able to move on to the Coliseum later without, like, comfortably. We technically, even though, like, it's super risky, we can still go for the second fight skip if I wanted to. Um, I did not look at those points, but that's okay. Um, yeah, but leave Diggs base damage is 60. Yeah. But I could give in and just, like, hope that the points worked out in my favor, but I also didn't look at Christine's points, so I, I, that would that would have not gone well. And also, um... Um... It's just, like, not... Not very safe to do is sent out. I'd have the to hope that Norman um, 
got like 3 0'd. He didn't get any points, is what I would need to happen for that to work. And I would also need Christine to be in a three point deficit from us. So there's a lot of specifics for the for the fight skips to work. If it wasn't so late game, it'd be a, a really cool reset point to put earlier. Get a really, really fast magma, but it's very late game, so. Act of a... Oh, might need a swap. It's special attack fell. But Christine's team's kind of kind of annoying, so I typically full swap anyway. The red corner, I didn't kill it. Alright. Mm, no, I'll just... I, 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 I don't want to... <laughs> okay. with Masquerade. Well, both corners Oop. still have a chance to win this. What kind of developments can we expect to see next? Now the next the next the thing could be like Grovile, that'd be cool. Unfortunately Glagar is one of the harder ones to deal with, so we had to deal with it. And Masquerade is also one of the more annoying ones to deal with. <laughs> So, we didn't get the best luck, but her team is not, like, the best. It's just her order of operations is what makes it fast or not, usually. A fierce blow. The red corner barely holds on. Gotcha. First strike. I think that's definitely partially due to my Volo average attack stat not getting uh, those ranges. I'm pretty sure it's a range to get Masquerade here. It couldn't take it. It's down. But luckily, it doesn't have great moves. Mobile is sent out. Okay. The end of the battle is getting closer by the minute. First strike. Ooh. Aerial ace hits. Taken down by an intense blow. The battle has ended. It's a total victory for the blue corner. All right. So, let me... Okay. So this fight can go pretty bad. Um, they have a lot of fire types and also stand slash, so water types are good here. But um, Print Plup is very annoying, and the Grottle is pretty strong. And even their fire types are relatively powerful. Um, that's not great, but we'll try our best to kill it. That's not good. <laughs> Luckily, War Turtle can kind of tank it. <laughs> But yeah, so this fight can go just like kind of bad. Okay, I got that. I'm in. I'm in. Uh, in torrent now. I don't think I'll speed this though. Yeah. Crushing blow. It went down. So um. We pretty much just hope for bad stuff like that to not happen, but we're gonna see how the rest of this goes. <laughs> Pidgeot is sent out. The red corner evened up the amount of remaining Pokemon, despite being at kind a of kind of sus at the moment. The the this was the other Colosseum that I was like debating on blow. making um, a save file for. I do have perfect points though, so we should be okay. <laughs> this is just a scary fight. Boldon, Terrell. Um, 
excitement. Uh, Kruger, which is a later fight we're going to get to. They're all scary fights. Did not need that crit. It's down and out. Currently, eight crits and eight good crits and nine bad crits. Is sent out. Ah, she brought Printplop, dude. Or he brought Printplop. Okay. I need. Hmm. I think that might be enough. It might be enough, I don't know. Come on, Ivysaur. Don't fail me now. The last Pokemon from each team will take the field. Both corners are in a top spot. Alright, alright, we did it. <laughs> we did it. That was a scary start. That quick claw was not cool, but <laughs> it's okay. The blue corner has won the game. The challenger won the league battle. All right. We are in the last two coliseums of the game. And we're going to go back to doubles for the rest of the game as well. There's no um, like layout gimmicks with these coliseums. There's nothing like extra I have to do <laughs> with like keeping track of whatever. It's just the same battles, um, just some more difficult ones. The gimmick for the field, however, for courtyard, is that there's there can be fog in any of the battles, including the the leader. So. We kind of don't want fog, except for the last fight where we do want fog. If we get fog in the Colosseum leader, it it actually makes the fight a little bit more consistent, a little easier to deal with. Um, so that's kind of what we're hoping for at the moment. Coliseum, but otherwise, we don't really want fog. It's all eyes on the challengers. And we usually bring a Pokemon that can Both take the fog away energy, if there is fog. So we're sure to see a great battle. Uh, first game, didn't get it, so that's cool. Moving on. Rotom, or not Rotom, there is a Rotom on this team, but um, we bring Rhyhorn because this team has a bunch of electric types. There's a, a handful of variation of like the team layout that we bring for this Coliseum. Um, okay, that's interesting. I'm not mad about it, necessarily. Okay. The situation is a bit of a stalemate. It's a mental tug of war as they anticipate each other's move. This is fine. Murkrow has protect, which can be really annoying. <laughs> but luckily, we got Murkrow out of the way. It's down and out. Uh, but this Coliseum, um, even though it's late game and it is difficult in certain instances, um, for Cindy's pass, it's a little more consistent than using Nate's pass. Nate's pass just has a little bit more just struggles in general having to deal with the battles in this Coliseum than Cindy does, for whatever reason. Don't really know why. <laughs> it, just, it just is. Even for Coliseum leader, it's, it's hard to do um, Kruger um, with just Cindy or just Nate, but it's there's there's more gimmicks with Cindy's team, I think, is probably the main reason. Both corners still have a chance to win this. Who's going to take the glory? No. Okay. <clears throat> I kind of just want to hide my Rhyhorn, so I don't mind digging, and that's fine too. This is not a favorable Probably item. gonna swap out, but I also am afraid to swap out. Its invasiveness <laughs> rose. Especially since they just did that. Minin starts to attack. 
But the target Pokemon is underground. So mine's gonna die, and then I can start double targeting the Rotom. Rotom's not great for them to bring, but I can deal with them. Especially with um with Rhyhorn out, because then it can't use parts of its moves. <laughs> and feels the relief. And it has a levitate, so I can't use dig on it. Bye, Minon. Taken down by an intense blow. The battle has reached its final stage. The blue Hopefully, this doesn't bite me in the butt. <laughs> Oh no. The move fails. Fine. Charmeleon starts to attack. Another important stat that we do want to like keep note of as well for some of the Pokemon at least. Charmeleon and Pidgeot, nice. Include it. Dude, I missed twice. That's what I'm saying. I just got like so distracted by that miss again. I forgot what I was talking about. But we did it. Good job. <laughs> Sucks for them to win right, or uh, Rotom, but for the blue corner. team is very weak to fire um and Rhyhorn kind of you know piggybacks off that because it's ground um so we pretty much just only need the first two here war turtles could back up lit by eerily beautiful moonlight the pokemon await their say. trainer's orders oh, i need it right now <laughs> the blue corner suddenly calls their pokemon back War Turtle is sent out. The battle begins. A brilliant hit. At the beginning of the run, I like look at the stats of my Pokemon to see if they're worth like using during the run. A small hit. So like looking for numbers its and accuracy fell. Seeing if it's worth it. Situation is a bit of a stalemate. It's a mental tug of war. What I mean by stats to track. Slammed up. It's down and out. Slammed up. I did not need that crit. Be a two shot for both of them. A fierce blow, such amazing power. I was just talking about the the importance of the speed stat. Burnt it. 
great. <laughs> Dude, one accuracy, one mud slap, and I'm done for. <laughs> Pokemon can't see nothing. Nice attack, attack Rose. I'm gonna die this at the end of this turn. Exhausting battle between both sides. GG. <laughs> it's all burned up now. The damage from its burn was just too much. <laughs> so true. I think I needed a crit to kill that. My wild's better defensive, uh, physically defensive than specially, so. It couldn't survive the second hit and goes down. <laughs> the game is now over. It's a total victory for the, I'm the Blue onto Dominique. That was not too bad. Not too bad. Oh. <laughs> this is like a team that we've seen in uh, Sunny Park. <laughs> Um, but for whatever reason, they just brought it over here, put a Murkrow in it. By beautiful moonlight, this is a Pokemon rough their trainer's orders. I'm gonna... No, I'm gonna stay in with you. The blue corner suddenly calls Two birds the on the field. I gotta bring out my pseudo-electric type. <laughs> is it's kind of what Dragonair plays as, just an electric type. And also when Dragonair's on the field, they're more likely to attack it, so it's kind of helpful for that as well. You can also bring Rhyhorn to this fight, but Dragonair's is a little bit more consistent, so... Decided to go for Rhyhorn. Or not where the cursor is. Right. You don't ever really want to double target Murkrow, because Murkrow has Protect. So, I try my best not to do that. Even if it's tempting. That hurt. Dragonair restored its health and feels the relief. A smashing blow that dealt some massive damage. Fierce blow! It's a direct hit! So much healing. Never even realized. Murkrow protects it! Aha! Get predicted. Got one of them down. The second hit and goes down. You don't really want to see the birds. Staravia That's not a bird. Murkrow starts to attack. Staravia does a little bit more damage. Turtle faces a great deal of pressure. Is <laughs> a fierce blow. It's a direct hit. Come on, yeah. Bam. It couldn't survive the second hit and goes down. Tough is sent out. Well, 
Both corners still have a chance to win this. One. What kind of developments can we expect to see next? Slam Dang. I was hoping they wouldn't go for uh, War Turtle there, but that's okay. We got a bad, uh, a bad pool of Pokemons we brought here, but that's okay. Wake up. <laughs> Nicely done. Dragonair faces a great deal of pressure. Hit that hurt. Dragonair won't wake up. It's accuracy fell. I shed the, the well, sleep. Both corners still have a chance <laughs> to win this. Who's going to take That's pretty the funny. No. It couldn't take it. It's down. Getting trolled by this Murkrow. Murkrow is playing uh, very smart. It usually doesn't play this smart. It usually kind of just like spams protect and snatch, kind of. <laughs> and then uses Night Nightshade a couple times, but it was really smart there. But she brought a good team. We did it, we got fast. Yeah, they love using fling when it like doesn't do anything. They love using fling. The results are in. The blue corner has won the game. So many double inputs. This is a, a less annoying fight to deal with, for sure. <laughs> Both That's a good lead. Are full of energy, so we're sure to see a great battle. We haven't gotten any fog either. The Pretty begins. funny. The blue corner makes the first attack. Yo. Thanks for the raid. Welcome in, gamers. Can we get a shout out to all the PSR runners, all the staff, everybody that's made the marathon what it is? Big shout outs. It's cool. I've been doing uh, doing these speedruns for a long time. Damage, 
It's cool that in 2023 I'm still doing speedruns. <laughs> For PSR. See what this last Pokemon is before I swap Ivysaur out. It hits. The Cedra is set yeah, out. that's fine. Well, both corners still have a chance to win this. What kind of developments can we expect to see next? Okay. I just didn't bring it uh... The blue corner calls their Pokemon back. I'm not supposed to bring Pidgeot here on the way, my notes have Pidgeot. I'm supposed to bring Ward Earl, but that's fine. Small hiccup. Okay. I should have I didn't even realize it used uh double double team or something. Might be. But it's fine. An exhausting battle between both sides. I was trying to take a take a look at my notes. I might have used smoke screen on me. That's okay. Slander. It couldn't take it. Anyways. <laughs> Moving forward. Bam. It couldn't take it. It's down. The results are in. It's a total victory for the blue corner. I'd say uh, this fight and this next fight, um, and honestly the fight after that too, like these three fights are kind of the easier ones of the Coliseum. The rest of them are all pretty difficult. But definitely these two. The one I just did and then this one we're doing right now. Definitely the more easier ones stuff can always go down but they just have one of the the less strong teams both corners are so full of energy that there's no doubt this will be a great battle double ghost the lead begins. the red corner makes the first attack a small hit Typically, we, we, we want like the fire types, like the fire type and like the haunter um, is kind of like the best situation. Duskull is not terrible to get. Um, a fierce blow. It's a direct hit. A harsh battle is taking place. <laughs> Let's go confused. A heated battle is unfolding in the Coliseum. Hopefully it hits itself. Oh, never mind. <laughs> Slam dunk. It's down and out. Flint. Oh, hey. no. <laughs> it attacked itself. Monferno is Goes sent out. Type. Well, both corners still have a chance to win this. Who's going to take the glory? Rushing blow! 
and we're doing pretty good with perfect points as well. We want to have as much as we can going into the leader. <laughs> so, keeping that up as much as I can. Don't do it. It keeps dealing damage. Don't do it. Don't make me a liar. Ah! Wow. <laughs> oh, I'm at one. Okay. I thought I died. Okay. A huge amount of damage. It's down. That's your last one. Mag cargo okay. is sent out. I guess I can just. Charmeleon starts to attack. A rigid shot. Do a little oink. Bam! It couldn't survive the second hit and goes down. Oh, yeah, that, that went pretty good. We did not lose a Pokemon. <laughs> the results are in. It's a total victory for the blue Almost. corner. But either way, we were still doing good on perfect points, but we got another one. Again, we don't like seeing the birds too much, but um, Ryo is a good one to get, so I'm gonna just fire fang, hope we get like a burn or a flinch. Oh, I guess not flinch. Good enough to it. The perfect points are for the Colosseum leader, where it's gonna be difficult. Typically, a lot of the fights are are relatively doable. Like they're not too hard. Um, there are definitely there are definitely some fights that are annoying to deal with or slow to deal with. Um, but it's just there's there's a couple Colosseum leaders that really give um, Cindy a hard time. What's everyone's favorite bird type Pokemon? <laughs> Aerial Ace hits. A huge amount of damage. It's down. It does work the same as uh, Stadium. As long as you don't lose a Pokemon, you get a perfect point. Wild Blue is sent out. Golbat starts to attack. <laughs> Very technical an answer, Hassan. But I like it. Missed. I was like really hoping that wouldn't happen and I missed. Uh, happens to the best of us. A fierce blow. It's a direct hit. Darn. Moving on. Pretty sure I can't Dragon Rage at that percent. Good flinch, good flinch. All right, getting outplayed. Oh no. You broke it. Slam <laughs> Okay. 
Okay, we got the goal there. <laughs> All right, heading into Kruger. So this is probably the hardest fight in the game for um, for Cindy. It's either this one or the final fight in the game. So we kind of want Fog. Fog helps it be a little bit more consistent. <laughs> So if I get Fog, that's cool. If not, I can still kind of win, but it's still it's harder, actually. <laughs> so we'll see what happens the here. I've gotten crazy luck without getting any Fog this whole time, so... Maybe I should get a little Fog here. Okay. Okay, no Fog. That's okay, though, because this is an interesting lead. So this lead... Um, uh, he probably is just gonna. Whenever he has Gligar, he usually just earthquakes the entire time until everyone's dead. He doesn't really care about his own team. Even if I have Pidgeot, he's gonna most likely earthquake because I have Rhyhorn out. So I'm gonna try my best to like avoid earthquake as best as I can. Unhelpful crit. Was the only one to go down. Mm -hmm. Do I have to double the sent out? Ooh. The red corner has already taken some serious damage, but there is always a chance of a comeback. I have to double protect. <gasps> I got the double protect. Let's go. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> Got very lucky there. Rhyhorn protected itself wow. from the attack. <laughs> All right, I kind of have to go for it now. I'm not sure if I killed the Gabite here, but... Okay, good. It went down. I don't know if this kills. I think it does, but I don't remember. Okay, it didn't kill, so... <laughs> Now the only bad thing that can happen here is that they anchored um, Swalot. <laughs> okay. Alright. Um... I have to hope they don't go for Rhyhorn here. Don't go for Rhyhorn. Hit the bird. You know you want to. <laughs> okay, it's okay. I we should be fine since it's um since it's the anchor. It's just kind of slow that it's the anchor. But this was still a pretty good start to the fight. Let's hope that we can keep this going. I think we should be able to just brute force win it. This doesn't kill for the for my full health, I don't think. Yeah. Good. No freeze or anything either. Okay, we're fine. <laughs> Good job, team. All right, I hyped that up. I made a save file and everything, and we didn't need it. Very, very nice. I'm very happy with this run. It couldn't take it. That went very well. It's much better to have Swalot uh, lead. Much more annoying to deal with it when it's a lead. Okay. 
I also had a lot of Pokemon to work with there. So that's good. All right, cool. So now we're in the last Coliseum. Stargazer. There's still a lot that can happen in this last Coliseum. The There's like a couple fights in it that are rather difficult. But um, hopefully we get some good perfect points and um, get a little bit of good luck. But like some of those hard fights that we had earlier, so we have to fight Voldon. Um, and we do have to fight Terrell. Terrell isn't as hard because it's in double battle format, but if they bring a hard team to fight against them it's still hard um they're ready to battle and are awaiting their trainers orders actually i don't know if i should probably can early but i'm just gonna be careful there um the stage is set and the curtain is up so like bold on is kind of hard um right from the start torel can be tricky dusty um who was the leader for um, Sunset. That can be a little tricky. It's not the hardest one, but it can be a little tricky. And then the last fight is hard as well. So we just have to make sure we have some perfect points, um, play them well, and we'll see how it goes. But it is looking like we are gonna be underestimate, but uh, I've definitely lost a lot of time in uh, Stargazer before. Like you can just, Get to Stargazer, um, do fine throughout it, and just keep losing to Mysterial. It's definitely possible, especially with Cindy's team. Cindy's team does not deal with um, Kruger or Mysterial very well. So, we'll see how it goes. Okay, we got very lucky on that Kruger fight. Doing it first try is crazy. <laughs> Especially without fog. If you can, if you get fog, it's a little easier to do a first try. But, yeah, that, was, that was a good, uh, good Kruger fight we had. And this is um, this is just what uh, Stargazer does. Is it gets Coliseum leaders from like all the other Coliseums and puts them as the regular trainers, and then you fight Mysterial. Um, they just like exclude a couple. Oh, uh, they come, like uh, they exclude like Sashay. I think like that's it actually. I think they just exclude Sashay. Um. Oh, and Kruger. They exclude Kruger as well because you just do Kruger. But all the other Coliseum leaders are in this uh, Coliseum. They, they exclude Sashe for some reason, and then they exclude um, Kruger. Those are the only two they exclude. Oh, and uh, they exclude Joe, but he's an ex he's a... Uh, Joe is the Coliseum leader for Gateway, and you don't need to go to Gateway. It's just an optional uh, Coliseum, so uh, that's probably why they didn't include him. The red corner makes the it could also be a good like argument for why they should have included him, I guess, but... <laughs> it's being ganged up on. A fierce blow! It's a direct hit! The air in the Coliseum is tense. We've got an interesting lead here. Apom Ledian. I wouldn't even say that they're different. They just like didn't include them. I don't know the reasoning. Multiple hits. It keeps dealing damage. 
Like, you can just, like, assume some of them, I guess, but, like, Sashe doesn't really make sense. What do they have against Sunny Park? They're not bad. Alrighty. Well, both corners still have a chance to win this. What kind of developments can we expect to see next? We are we are good here. A fierce blow. It's a direct hit. Slammed him. Oh no. No. That's okay. <laughs> Just missed out on that perfect point. Bam! Taken down by an intense blow. Charmeleon is sent out. The end of the battle is getting closer by the minute. Interesting. Joe does cosplay. Joe does like the Lucario cosplay. Doesn't he? Or is that just Dusty? No, Joe's does. No, that's Dusty. Yeah, you're right. I'm dumb. I'm playing the game, not remembering anything. <clears throat> I guess you're right, though. That's interesting. I haven't uh, looked into that. Uh, deeply but it would make sense i guess <laughs> i wonder what sashe um i guess um in post game sashe is or like sunny park is like little cup so maybe that's that's why a lot of crits over here huh It's a it's a range on Del Caddy technically. I'm not sure if like how much like how uh, likely it is with my attack stat, but like 104 is a little on the lower on low average side, but okay, never mind. I lied. Is sent out. Well, both corners still have a chance to win this. Who's going to take the glory? I don't know if I'm in a blaze at the moment, though. Bam! I killed the Sunflora, so that's good. I might be in blaze. <laughs> that's a range on the Sunflora. Did I just miss another perfect point? <laughs> Fuck. Okay. That's rough. I got pretty unlucky there. I got two bad damage rolls. The red corner stands with their backs against the wall. Del Caddy will be lucky to get through this okay. crisis. Mm. Voldon can be a spooky fight. We don't typically get a perfect point here. It's kind of hard to get perfect points for the rest of the Colosseum, to be honest. We can kind of get one in Dusty, maybe get one in Terrell. It's possible to get one in Voldon, it's just unlikely. So we'll see what happens here, but it's a little spooky. A little spooky.
All right, we're gonna do Rhyhorn Charmeleon lead. Um, I do. here both corners are so full of energy that there's no doubt this will be a great battle hmm. ah it's kind of rough I'm a dig This is a this would have been a good a better lead if I had Pidgeot, but I wouldn't have known. Okay, that's good at least. It's not what I wanted, but sometimes it doesn't kill. It's a rough one. And kind of need a uh, need Rhyhorn for this fight, but I'm gonna have to hope Blue that he didn't bring um, Rotom, damage, but there is always a chance of a comeback. and hope that I uh, kill the Elekid here. I'm pretty sure I kill the Elekid, but I I think it's a range. I might not win this one, but we'll try. If I get like a crit here, that'll be nice. A fierce blow. Ah. Such amazing power. I'm pretty sure Thunder Punch just kills Pidgeot. Okay. It's down just kill Charmeleon, that's fine, I guess. Fine. Okay, I hit. That's good. Aerial Ace hits. It couldn't take it. It's down. Dragonair is sent out. Carnivine is sent mm. out. Okay. Well. Both corners still have a chance to um, win this. Who's going to take Yeah, the I just have to go for a Carnivine here, and then I have to... No, 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 I need to get rid of my thing. I, because Dragonair can't get rid of my thing by itself. <laughs> Unfortunately, Dragonair is just, like, supposed to be, like, a distraction so that they don't hit Pidgeot. Lost it. I think I just lost because of that. Hit. It's good at least to hit Dragonair. I need some crits. No, oh, I killed. I got a high roll. It went down. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Thank you for hitting. A fierce blow. It's a direct hit. 
Carnivine desperately holds on. Alright. Yeah, Para. Alright, that was a little spooky, but we made it out. We didn't get a perfect point, but we didn't lose one, so that's good too. Game, set, and match. The blue corner has won the game. Alright, hold on. <laughs> Thanks, guy. Like up in the air, whether you bring Rhyhorn Dragonair, because they're both weak to ice type. So, actually, I'm not sure which one's stronger, to be corner, honest with you. Ivysaur, War Turtle. And from the red corner, I thought that um, Here they come. the blue corner suddenly calls their Pokemon back. I felt that if since it was stab, or not stab, but since it had, the stage is yeah, it was like the same same type the attack. The it would probably help a little bit more, but that was all I was going off of. I haven't done the calcs. It's being ganged up on. Oh, the crit. Okay, I got that range, that's good. Sand Slash is sent out. The red corner has already taken some serious damage. However, this battle is just getting started. Okay. Rhyhorn protects itself. The sand slash getting uh quick clogged is kind of annoying, but <laughs> its own teammate was the only one to go down. A fierce blow. Sand slash barely holds oh. on. Charmeleon is sent out. The blue corner currently leads. Can they end this quickly? is not a favorable matchup. I didn't know what exactly to do there. I could have gone for the double protect, but I don't know if I needed to. And I need to kill the thing, so I want to make sure I try to get damage on it. That's actually fine. Pidgeot is sent out. Ivysaur is sent out. The red corner stands with their backs right, against good. the wall. Sand slash. I actually thought there was another Pokemon, so never mind. We're extra good. Quick Dude! Took a <laughs> How many times is Quick Claw gonna activate? Last two fights. Maybe we can get a little, uh, get a little, uh, perfect point here, but it's a little scary the, the small amount of perfect points we have. I'm a little scared. Um, it's gonna come, definitely come down to that, I think, but I'm gonna try my best to get one here. Ugh. 
both corners are so full of energy not that great there's no situation. doubt this will be a great um battle. I don't know what to do here. I got not great luck there. Some bad lead. He took my lead that I do with him. Vigoroth Luxio. I think I just need to dig. It doesn't, I actually don't even really know who to dig because Luxio has a berry that makes it so dig don't do too much damage to it. And I have minus attack. <coughs> so I'm just not sure. Oh my god. Dragonair, frozen solid and unable to move. A heated battle is unfolding right. in the Coliseum. Uh, so... Not looking good for your boy. <laughs> That's okay. Have some ideas. Some tricks up my sleeve. Luxio starts to attack, but the target Pokemon is underground. Gosh, it does nothing. <sighs> Pidgeot is sent out. The blue corner trails slightly when comparing the number of remaining Pokemon, but we still can't predict the outcome of the battle. This is a rough one. I might have to use my perfect point here, and then I can do I can do quick saves before each fight, so I might have to do a quick save, which is fine. Didn't use Ice Fang. <laughs> Crushing blow. It went down. Keep doing that. Keep it coming. Very glad to see Riolu. Aerial Ace hits. Okay, that's A good. Huge amount of damage. <laughs> it's down. Combuskin. <laughs> yes, just keep doing that. <laughs> Here's an instance of just the AI not doing what it needs to do. Really helping me out. I'm sweating. Okay. Well, both corners still have a chance to win this. I make sure what I kind of developments can we expect to see next? Okay, I might be okay Slam here. <laughs> it's down and out. Maybe. Goodbye. Heard it's okay. way. I can protect. <laughs> Rhyhorn starts to attack, but the target Pokemon The next is fight is the last fight of the game. 
Um, however, I don't know. Ooh, wait. Can I even do that? Will this affect anything? We'll see. Go tailwind. I'm gonna try my best to like <laughs> save beforehand so we can uh, make sure I Rhyhorn protected itself don't have to redo the Coliseum over again. That's the goal. Because then, otherwise, we will be finishing soon, yes. A fierce blow! It's a direct hit! Nice miss. Alright, we won. Okay. <laughs> that was really scary, but the Luxio was not using Ice Fang like it could have been, and we, in this household, take those. So. We are on to the last fight of the game. I am going to do a quick save just to be safe. <laughs> So now I can like reset it if I keep losing. So, Mysterial. Difficult fight here. We pretty much just hope he brings a specific, like, set of Pokemon. Um, and... Go from there. So, uh, that's what we're gonna hope for. <laughs> we don't really want, um, we don't want Kingler, we don't want Golbat. Haunter's not great either. Okay, Dragon is not good either. But... From the blue corner, <laughs> okay, this is gonna be interesting. Charmeleon. And from the red corner, uh, Dragonair. Such energy. Yeah, I just need to go for some crits here, I think. The stage is set and the curtain is up. A heavy blow. Did not get a crit on Haunter. That's gonna kill. Spy by Sludge Bomb. Take it out already. Oh. Oh. Okay, he used Aqua Tail. Not. Uh, I think it has Dragon Tail or something. I don't remember what Dragon move is. Maybe it's Dragon Rush. I think it's Dragon Rush actually. Um. Okay. So I need to. It's a rough death for sure, but it's not over just yet. Dragonair didn't do too much. If I win the speed tie... Okay, good. Okay, didn't do too much. So that's good. We're looking good. Looking positive here. And that's a good one. That's fine. Okay, we should be fine here. Chansey's a one-shot. Let's get rid of Chansey. Alright. Time should be uh, relatively soon. Like the next, like, two minutes or something like that. <laughs> Let's 
we kill this uh, fish crash, I'll get a better exacto time frame. I'm not gonna swap out or anything, I'm just gonna let the game game. Hopefully I get like a crit or something. But I got Ivysaur. <laughs> Everyone's favorite anchor. GG. We did it. We didn't even have to use a save state. Love that. The game is now over. The GG's guys. So time is not at right not right here, but once there's gonna be some text after after all this, um, and then once the uh, once the screen fades to black after mashing through that text, that is when time's time is. So it's gonna be in about 30 seconds from here. But we did it. Very, very proud of that run. And time. GG's. So uh, <laughs> that's Pokemon uh, Battle Revolution, and uh, that's also this is the last run for the marathon. I know we're doing an outro, so definitely stick around. Also, this is, these are some bomb credits, um, so if you like some good music, some nice cinematics, this is a, a nice credits to look at, listen to. Um, but thank you guys so much for watching. Thanks for hanging out with me for these past four hours. This is a really good time. I'm only like 12 minutes off my PB. So this was really, really good. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed. I, I'm super, super happy I was able to show you guys PBR and also uh, the elegance that is Cindy's pass, the red pass of PBR. This was a, a dream come true, really. I'm, I'm really, really glad I got to show off low percent Cindy. So thank you guys for having me.